So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, November 7th, 2022 meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. I'll call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Venberry. I'm the chair of the Redevelopment Board, and I will uh, now introduce the other members of the board, starting with Steve Revelak. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. Eugene Benson. Good evening. Melissa Tentakoulos. Good evening. Uh, Kim Lau. Here. And from the Department of Planning and Community Development, we have uh, Director Claire Ricker. Hello. And uh, Kelly Linema, the Assistant Director. Here. Great. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'll just note for the record that this meeting is being recorded by uh, the folks at ACMI, so that will be made available to the public following the meeting. The first agenda uh, item on our docket this evening is public hearing docket number 3722, 141 Massachusetts Avenue, which is an application for uh, signage by Leader Bank. Uh, and at this time, what I'd like to do first is turn it over to the Department of Planning and Community Development for an overview of the memorandum. Great. So um, this is a longtime business uh, bank uh, of approximately 2,000 square feet uh, has been in this location predating the zoning. Um, the applicant is uh, seeking to replace the existing signage with a wall sign that exceeds what's allowable in the property sign district. Uh, this business is in the B2, um, but it predates B2, um, which means it's in residential business sign. Applicant is removing the two existing wall signs, replacing the sign on the Mass Ave facade with an internally illuminated 40 square foot wall sign. So this will exceed what's allowed by right in the sign district, but it complies with what's allowed in the business sign district. And that's it. Great. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, I'll now turn it over to the applicant. Do we have a member of the team from uh, Peter Bank here this evening? Great. So if you could um, introduce yourself. Um, we'd uh, love to provide you up to 10 minutes for an introductory presentation. With this one, I don't think you'll probably need the whole 10 minutes, but um, take whatever time you need. That's uh, my name is Lauren Rosen, and I own Artifacts. We're located in Bloomfield, Connecticut, and we're here on behalf of Leader Bank. Um, I'm here with uh, Paul D. Chrysanthus, who's the uh, rep from our company and uh, Brett Schofield with the uh, Leader Bank. Uh, so our presentation is up on the screen and um, we are replacing a, an existing sign. Our presentation, I believe we meet 18 of 19 of the criteria. Uh, there's one left that we haven't quite met in this specific zoning, and that's the size. Um, we've proposed a sign that's going to be a lot different than the existing sign. So the existing sign is a traditional set of channel letters. The channel letters are five inches deep. They're also 30% bigger than what we show now. The letters that we've proposed Although they come out to 39.75 square feet technically, um, that's based on the top and bottom of the star if you were to draw a rectangle around the entire perimeter. So what happens, we're getting um, assessed for square footage. A lot of it is negative square footage, which means that it actually is not lettering or a logo, it's white space, which I know happens. We can reduce the size of the star and we could gain uh, a good amount of square footage back uh, to make the sign smaller, but that's the new logo. And the bank's been around for over 20 years. They've come out with this nice modern logo and they want to present it in ratio to what it actually is. And the star is a little bit bigger than the uh, copy. So uh, we have reduced the square footage from the existing by 30%. And upon Kelly's uh, request or suggestion, 
we eliminated an earlier proposal, uh, we had another star at the diagonal facet above the entry, uh, which, you know, we thought was attractive, everybody liked it, it doesn't conform to zoning, we let that go. Uh, the other thing about the letters that we're proposing, they have a very thin profile, they're only two inches deep as opposed to the five inches which lightens the mass. So when you see the letters from an oblique, they appear to be a lot smaller. And I brought an example of a job we just finished for Leader Bank. Um, this is at the Boston Seaport. So the lighting method is known as a halo light, um, except for the red, which lights forward and reverse. So it's all reverse lighting except for the red. And the red is very toned down. It's done with a translucent film and opaque, or opaquing backers. Uh, so it's not very uh, overwhelming at night. It's kind of laid back. So we put a lot of thought into the presentation. Along with it, uh, we're going to put a nice new modern uh, fascia panel at the soffit um, that goes around the entire building and take off what is kind of a clunky, uh, we're not quite sure what it is and we've surveyed it a few times, but we're going to lessen the load with that uh, uh, burgundy piece coming off and the uh, metal striping coming off and we're going to simplify this building. So aesthetically, I think we've jumped far into the future. Um, I think if you think about the 39.75 square feet, I know we're in a mixed district which it's partially residential, zoning's changed. I think in the way we've used negative space, thinned out the letter and come out with a modern approach, um, a revamped building, we've improved this corner quite a bit and that was our desire. So we're hoping you look at it and you say, well, they are over, they didn't meet one of the uh, 19 criteria, but it's very tastefully done. Um, a lot of thought went into it, and we hope you will accept it as is. And Brett, um, if you have anything to add about the bank, Brett's been with the bank for 18 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, Brett Schofield, I'm the uh, facilities officer for Leader Bank. I've uh, been there for 18 years. So quite a long time. Uh, I've seen a lot of changes both for the bank and in Ireland. Uh, I think we're trying to accomplish a good looking something for the area. Uh, as Lauren said, rules change and we understand that. Um, arguably we could keep our older, less attractive sign up in place. Uh, we prefer not to do that. We think it's better for us and better for the town, uh, quite honestly, to do a, a more modern sign, something cleaner if we need it. So we're just hoping for some consideration on this. We understand that this is a little bit of a variance, but uh, really trying to meet in the middle on this and uh, hoping that the committee will take that into consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so at this time what I'd like to do is open it up to members of the redevelopment board for any uh, questions or clarifications that you'd like to ask the applicant. Uh, once we do that, we will open it up to any members of the public who would uh, wish to address the board related to this docket. Uh, once public comment period is over, we'll then turn it back to the board for uh, deliberation and there may be some additional clarifying questions during that time. Great. Uh, so we'll start with Kim. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Surprised you. Um, I just have two, two questions and maybe a request. Um, the white uh, panel, what's that made of? Uh, I'll answer that. It's a composite which is aluminum. Uh, it, it's four mil thick, so it's just uh, under a quarter inch. It's aluminum, hard plastic aluminum, and it's going to be an off white. A Lucabon, is it? It's like a Lucabon, a Pollock, okay. any of those brand names. Okay. It has it, this one's called Vitrabon. Very simple. Different name, that's all, yeah. Um, what about the gray? Same. Okay. Um, 
I have no problem with your sign and you're asking for relief on the size of the sign. I'm asking in return for this relief is to extend that uh, sign, extend that white and gray area up another, I don't know, four courses of brick to cover the brick so it aligns it with the bottom of the cornice. So it looks like it's like part of the building. Because when I look at this real quick, I see the, uh, the Luca Bond sign that's the whole sign, From the whole white area is the sign, as opposed to just the letters. So if you bring it up to the other side of the corners, now it's part of the building facade. It's not longer a sign. If you're doing that, I have no problem with this, and your request is fine. That's the only thing I have to say. Point well taken. Good analysis. And we may hear uh, other opinions, but we will I appreciate that. And we'll, uh, just to let you know, we'll, we'll kind of wait until the, the end to give you the final direction, not to say that we won't in that direction. That's just okay. fine. Great. Melissa. Uh, yeah, I guess I just wanted to know, and maybe from looking to the staff for some guidance on the, the pedestrian signage. So I noticed even in this sample here, we have more kind of pedestrian um, blaze sign on this guy. So did we, was there thinking on that, or is the bylaw situated, like, written that we can't? Can we do overhanging signs here? Um, we can basically do two signs. So mm -hmm. they could introduce like a, like a pedestrian and a sign mm -hmm. like that. Um, it just wasn't part of the proposal, so. Okay. Um, so I guess to the proposers, um, was did you have thinking on that or was there a reason that was um, not included? Well, I can tell you that uh, we did have a compass where the 141 is. That was a sign that was pointing to the corner, it's not necessarily on that so, um, but it added to the total square footage that we were using. So we thought instead of two smaller signs, the, um, the side facing Mass Ave where most of the traffic was, that was where we were going to have most of the Oh, by adding it, you added to the square footage that you couldn't then use on the side of the building? Right. So on the leader bank on the front of the building, we had to shrink even more mm -hmm. to accommodate the total square footage requirement. Got it. Um, okay, that's kind of just some of my questions. Thanks, Gene. So this sign is about thirty-nine square feet. Thirty-nine point seven five. Thank. I said about, but thank you. <laughs> thank you for being precise. Um, and the sign by law limits the sign size to 20 square feet. So tell me why you can't do a 20 f square foot sign. Just take this sign, which I like, by the way, and reduce the size to 20 square feet. I, I can answer that uh, quickly. We've tried a bunch of um, sizes, and the, the smaller this got, the less in ratio with the structure it started to look diminutive, um, like a business that wasn't too important. It just seemed that this was in perfect ratio. And you didn't have the ability to make a 20 square foot sign in good ratio by reducing the white band? Um. I don't think it was so much the white band. I think, one, it was a legibility factor. Two, it was the size of the letter, the height of the letter, and ratio to the length of the, uh, the building and the height of the building. So, you know, we've been in business for 40 years, and out of the 60,000 signs that we've built, um, this seemed to be about, uh, and ratio conservatively without going over the top. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Uh, Steve. So, um, I have two other questions. Um, this may be two other requirements that this doesn't quite meet. Uh, so in your, in the residential business sign district, which corresponds to the B2 business district, um, in addition to a 20 square foot maximum area, there is also a height limit of six feet. Um, now, I, I can understand, I mean, that clearly on that facade, it doesn't leave you a lot of room. 
So I, I could understand why you would want to go above. The other question I have is the white panel that says Leader Bank. How wide is the panel and how wide is the sign? Well, don't give the uh, blueprints. So my, okay, so the sign is seven feet, 17 feet, 10 inches. Thank you, Mr. Benson, for, for showing this. <laughs> one, of the, one of the other restrictions is that the sign is limited to 60% of the width of the architectural element. And it looks like you may be exceeding that there, but it, I can't tell without the dimension of the band itself. Okay, so 60% of the architectural element, which would be the length of the uh, facade? I would, you know, I would, I would call the architectural element uh, this area. You know, to me, it's, it's, this section is separate, for, separate from this, which is separate from this. Yeah, so I would say um, I don't have a scale rule, and I didn't bring the original uh, prints, but I would say the height is approximately three foot six as it stands now mm -hmm. of the uh, white band. Right, but it's the the, re the limit, the 60% constraint is on the width. Oh, I'm sorry, it's uh, I have it here. It's four feet. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Oh, okay, there you go. Is that it? One page I don't think that's answered that question. I'm talking about this the horizontal. horizontal. Oh, as far as width-wise, it's uh, the, the white band. Mm -hmm. uh, the letters are 1710. Uh, the white band is approximately 20. Okay. All right, so 17 for 20. So. Let greater, it's you're, you're, yeah, you're above 60. Above, above 60. All right, uh, nothing further from me right now, Madam Chair. Great, thank you. So, um, I, I agree with Steve. I think my bigger concern, I, I have no issue with approving the signage as if this was in the business district rather than the business residential. I think it's more appropriate for this business, I think it's more in keeping with your. Um, neighboring properties. We know that we have a Swiss cheese of zoning along this street, so I have no issue with that. I, my biggest issue is with the 60% piece, and I think that potentially we have an, a, an easy solve for that, which I, I think might be different than what Kim suggested, and we'll get back to discussing that. And that's simply to extend the white band, which I'm calling, you've created an element by, by adding this gray piece here which um, creates three separate distinct architectural elements in this facade by, by continuing the white band across the length of this, you then have a singular architectural element and can keep the sign the same size if, if you wish. In my, in my view, again, we'll discuss that, but I wanted to um, plant that seed before we open this up for public comment. Uh. You have one response. I think on the building we have existing columns of uh, granite, and I think probably we keyed into the granite to cover the granite with probably a granite-like color. I don't think it gets in the way of that white band that you mentioned, so we can do that. Right. There would preference. be a step in the in the um, in the band itself, but you could create again instead of the. Um, the gray Aluka bond, you could instead continue the white. So question for you, would that be to the left solely or are you considering to the right as well? The right only. The right only. Oh, the right only. Right. Okay. So that is a projecting piece of granite that comes out about eight inches. Correct. We could bring this out as a soffit that goes over. Right, so instead of the gray running to the same height as the white sign band that you're effectively creating, stopping that at the bottom of the area with the white sign band and, and basically creating a reveal and then a continuing Def the white step. Okay, yeah. great. So that's my only, um, my only uh, question for you. Any other questions before we open this up for public comment? Great. 
At this time, I'll invite um, any member of the public who's joining us this evening um, to indicate whether or not you'd like to speak. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand and I'll call on you in the order that hands are raised. Great. Um, so please, just before you begin speaking, if you could please identify yourself by first and last name and you'll have up to three minutes to address the board. Thank you. My, my name is Robert T. Lenihan, and I have been a customer of the East Arlington Branch of Leader Bank for many, many years now. I have to say, I love this bank. I very much appreciate that the staff is often uh, almost exclusively women of color, and I enjoy patronizing this red bank. I'm also, among other things, a professional typographer and graphic designer. And my graphic design figures are twitching. I wanted to move the Leader Bank flush left and extend the brick up. And maybe reduce the leader bank slightly. You have too much white space around the leader bank. It feels like extending the white would be out of proportion. I'm just saying this. If I were going to design it, that's what I would do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who'd wish to speak this evening? Okay. Seeing no other hands, we will close uh, public comment for this docket. And I'll turn it back to the board for discussion. And we'll start this side with uh, Steve. So, um, Madam Chair, I think you offered a, a, a very workable solution to the 60% constraint, and I would be, um, you know, ha happy with the uh, changes proposed. Great. Gene. The regulations only allow us to increase the size, provided the architecture of the building, location of the building relative to the street, or the nature of the use of the building is such that signs of larger size should be allowed. I don't think it meets any of those. I think stretching out the white band is aesthetically the wrong way to go, just having a longer band so it's 60%. If they reduce the star in the leader bank to 20 feet, all of the problems are solved and they can have a permit. That's my feeling. Let me say a couple other things. It's ridiculous that this is in the B2 zone. Right? This should not be the B2 zone. It should be somewhere else where they can have the 40-foot sign. Unfortunately, it's in the B2 zone. The other thing I'll point out is the liquor store next door, which you can see in one of the pictures says Giles. It's no longer Giles. And somehow they got to change their sign, which is too big. And I don't know how that happened, because now it says something like New England, whatever. And so I think we need to do something about their sign, or we need to change this from the B2 district to another district when we go to town meeting. Meanwhile, even though I like the new sign, I think it's much better aesthetically pleasing than the old sign. I liked her idea about how to position it and not having an empty white band, I, I can't agree to go beyond 20 feet. Understood. Thanks, Jane. Melissa? Um, I'm fine with the recommendation that you met to extend it. I feel like it's more continuity for the kind of building, because obviously you're occupying the space where the green or the gray is right now. It's That's, area. yeah. Right. So it's not a separate walk-up window or something like that which appears to and under this design a little bit so I think kind of extending it over makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to Ken's building I kind of like the exposed brick I feel like it brings the top part I feel it brings a little bit more character to that building um, so I think that's kind of my thinking on that um, but I'd be comfortable where this is now. I guess I would want to hear from anyone else on this board about the pedestrian kind of blade signs or things like that because it does seem to me that we've been trying to work on creating more of a walkable um, environment and those things kind of create enough interest and add more texture to the walking experience so I'd like to hear people on that. Thanks, Melissa. Can I say something? Um, Wait till we go through. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go to Ken and then I'll offer some, some thoughts um, and then we'll go back to the blade sign. Okay. Yeah. Ken. Um, I like your, uh, your idea about continuing the white band across. I think that would uh, balance it out a lot more. Um, I know my opinion is different from Lissa, uh, but uh, I would prefer to have that 
uh, both the gray and the white to extend up to the cornice. I'm not sure what the rest of the board thinks, but either way, uh, unfortunately, you know, we have this mixed up zoning on Mass Ave. This is Mass Ave, and we will be addressing this soon. So yeah. I, I don't want Leader Bank to be caught in this mixed up zoning we have here. That's, that's really kind of a uh, hodgepodge right now along Mass Ave, and uh, they shouldn't be punished for that. Um, so uh, I think if we if we bring the line if we bring that line across uh, the gray uh, window to the right, and I can go either way uh, with the top, but I prefer to go up all the way to the corners. But if that's not the case, I'm not going to hold up this uh, approval of this sign. So I'm for this approval of the sign. Great, thank you, Ken. Um, and I'll just mention two items. I, I actually agree with Melissa. I do, I do actually like the, the brick above, and especially I think if we extend the white band, it kind of gives you a nice bookend of the brick around, um, around the, the facade. I, I was struggling a bit with the gray piece and whether or not that was actually part of the bank or not without having, without having that, that piece mm -hmm. um, run across. <clears throat> um, I do think that, again, given the, the, the business type and the, the context that the, I, I feel that there's um, permission for the, for the board to approve the, the larger sign as, as is. I feel comfortable with, with that. The one thing I forgot to mention prior is that um, you are also in the, in the bylaws allowed two signs. Um, and that includes wall signs, any type of awning or projecting sign, and um, window signs. And so you're showing two window signs plus um, the, uh, the sign um, in the sign band. So um, I'd, I'd like to see you limit the, the window signs to, to one. Those are temporary Yeah, those are just uh, Okay. Um, so I think Melissa, that would be part of it as well. If they use that, some of that as advertising, mm -hmm. then that kind of precludes them um, from adding even more additional mm -hmm. signage, I believe, as well. But Jean, um, I'll ask you to weigh in on the blade sign. Well, I, a couple of things. One is because you're on the corner, you're entitled to a second wall sign facing the other street, which you haven't proposed, but you can do that if you like. So I think that's pretty clear. I think the blade sign, I, I haven't looked at this, but I think the blade sign is allowable in addition to the two wall signs, because they're different sorts of signs. So I think they are allowable. And window signs, you can have window signs as long as they don't exceed 25% of the area of the window. Because I had actually looked at that and I, it looked to me like they were okay. They may not want a blade sign. If, they, if you want a blade sign, you can get it approved administratively if it's not too big. So you don't have to deal with that with us now. If you want a second wall sign on the other street and it's no bigger than 20 square feet, you can get it approved administratively without coming back to us. That's, so it is the 25% is correct under 6.2.5D, but under 6.2.5C is the footnote where it says no more than two awning wall and window signs. So that's where they have to eliminate right. one of the two. Right. Yeah. Well, so there are two. There are two. You have three. So you have two window and a wall sign, and so it's two inclusive of the whole suite on that facade. Thank you. Yep. Um, so is there further discussion to Melissa's point? It sounds like potentially um, adding a, a blade sign would be allowable mm -hmm. um, in it as an additional sign. Should that be something that you have an interest in pursuing? If, if it's just, uh, I, I feel that I could go either way on mm -hmm. that. If that's something you're interested in pursuing, we could either make that a part of a motion or not. 
honestly, it's not something we really considered. Okay. You know, pretty busy, so. so that's something that, again, would be allowable as of right. And if you decided to add that, I think in the future, you could do that directly with the department and you would not need to come in front of the redevelopment board. With the sign, we're on the corner. Would it be on Mass App? Would it be on Trump? Yeah, where do you think it should be? Where we're at? I would put it on Mass Ave because that's where the majority of your pedestrian traffic is coming. I think the column to the left of the uh, white van is probably the most logical spot. Yeah, it kind of would follow this pattern. Uh, somewhere to Boston. <coughs> okay. um, so is there a motion for approval? Um, do we, do we feel like we have consensus or any particular items? I know that Jean has some concerns, but are there any other concerns that we feel like we need to address? Okay. I'm fine. Uh, I will withdraw my request about uh, extending the sign up to cover the brick and just saying that we'll extend the white band okay. across the, the, the gray. I'm not here to fight everybody here. <laughs> Right. Is there a motion to approve the, the <laughs> signage um, with the size as proposed with the condition that the white signage band be extended um, to the, um, to the uh, far edge of the adjacent um, gray panel and that one of the two window signs be uh, removed? So motions. Is there a second? Second. All right. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Aye. Uh, Jean? No. Melissa? Yes. Uh, Jean, uh, Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations. Your sign is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the idea about the white pin. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that Closes our first agenda item, um, docket number 372. Sorry. Thank you so, so we'll much. Update the rendering and set back to you for the Yes, so what you'll do is you'll follow directly up with um, Claire and Kelly at the department, and they will um, work with you on approving the, the final rendering as we discussed this evening. Thank right on. you so much. We'll Thank you so much for coming in this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll now move to the second agenda item, which is public hearing uh, for docket number 3723, 22, 22 to 24 Belknap Street. I'll actually also invite any members of the public who wish to move forward at this time so you can hear better to please feel free to do so. Um, and again, I will apologize for the acoustics in the room. Um, Let's see, so as we move forward with this, uh, what I'd like to do first is um, offer Claire from the Department of Planning and Community Development the opportunity to um, provide an overview of the memorandum that was prepared. Then we will ask the applicant to, um, to present their materials. Uh, you'll have up to 10 minutes to do that. We'll open this up to public comment um, after the board asks you any clarifying questions, and then we'll move back to um, the board's deliberation. So Claire? Sure. So um, this is a, a proposal for a large uh, addition on an existing two-family structure. Um, the board has jurisdiction here because the property abuts the Miniman bikeway. Uh, the use will not change. It will remain a two-family. Essentially what they're doing is moving from a stacked two-family to a side-by-side two-family um, with the additional square footage. Um, I think that's basically Okay, great. Thank you. And a um, question I have for you in terms of the report, there are no, um, th there was no relief being requested. It's, it's a simple uh, special permit approval. Is that correct? correct. Okay, great. Thank you, Claire. Um, lovely. Uh, so uh, can I uh, ask who will be presenting um, from the applicant? Great. If you could Hi. introduce yourself. Yes, good that would be great. my name is uh, James Grisling of LR Designs, uh, 64 Alston Street, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, we are seeking, as you said, a special permit for a large addition to 2224 uh, Belknap uh, under section 542B6. Um, the addition 
all in will be uh, a 1,200 plus square foot addition, which uh, allows us to reconfigure the building into a side by side, uh, into side by side dwellings. Um, as was described, the rear lot or the rear lot line abuts the um, Inman Bikeway and is uh, separated by a vegetated slope of approximately 11 feet. Um, the additions will be on each side of the building. Um, maintaining, it will maintain the depth front to back of the building um, and increase the attic. Um, the lot is a rather large lot, uh, uh, 10,000 square feet, 10,440 square feet. And um, we feel that the addition, uh, slightly larger units uh, fit well on this site. Um, again, it remains a two family. Uh, it gives the the homeowners flexibility in terms of the number of bedrooms. Uh, a lot of people are working from home now, so office space and dens are uh, something that are um, sought after. And um, we think that the, uh, the access to the bike trail from um, Linwood and the view uh, from the upper stories of Spy Pond will definitely uh, be attractive to longtime homeowners. Thank you so Thank much. You. I appreciate it. Um, before I turn it over to my colleagues, I'll just say that um, I, I really like what you've done with the architecture of the, of the property. Um, I think certainly greatly improved its presence on the street. And um, I know that this is in front of us because of the abutting uh, the, the, the bikeway. Um, but given that there are no um, requested um, Waivers or for relief, I'm definitely in the uh, On the site plan, you show a garage. Yeah, there's an existing garage on the site. Um, what's going to happen to it? It remains. So you're going to park two cars in that driveway, and or you can still use that as a driveway and park two cars in the garage? Uh, So will the garage be used for cars? That will be up to the, the, the owners. So there's actually six parking spaces. Potentially. OK. And uh, is the curb cuts along the this front is, of the? This, this reflects existing parking. Um, there's both curb cut on the right and left of the property. Currently, currently the driveway is paved edge of the house, all the way to the back, to the garage, and it's shared with, with the neighboring property. We'll be reducing that paving. This will be the dedicated parking area for uh, one of the units, and then this will be the dedicated, although this is enlarged, it's not as wide as what's there presently. All right, I, I just, I mean, I, 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 I like uh, Rachel said, uh, I think what you've done to the house looks nice. It, it's, an, it's an improvement to the neighborhood. Uh, you're not asking for any relief. It's just you're asking for review because it's a large-scale project. And normally, we don't review this because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a ZBA thing, not us. It just happens to be on a bikeway, that's all. And, um, you know, I just would have liked, wish, I'm not saying I will make it mandatory for anything else, but to have all the parking on one side and park in the garage. Uh, but I, I don't think, you know, that's maybe too much of an ask there. Um, just so you, you can have more front yard, um, fronting the neighbors and everything else that there's no, because, you know, one of the things I see as you go down the street is, having curb cuts and driveways everywhere you having a front yard is, is nice and, and um, so I'm gonna see what the rest of my colleagues think about that and that's all I had I mean there's nothing else to question everything else there seems to be okay as far as um, what you got there
My name Thank is Jason Santana. I'm part of the I'm one of North America development. I'm part of the team. The problem with that, since they're side by side, we can have to park here and walk all the way across to a unit, and that could be a little bit. Of, I don't know. Some people might look at that a little bit of a challenge if we park everybody on one side. So it's more like a design. But you can also look at it in a way of, well, this is my unit. I have a nice front yard. I'm not walking through a parking <clears throat> parking driveway to get to my unit. There's many ways of looking at it, okay, sir? Yeah. Great. Thank you, Ken. Melissa? Um, I mean, I'm comfortable with what's been proposed. I have to, I'm having a little trouble visualizing what Ken's saying in terms of the driveway. So I just want to be sure on this. So this becomes. So this this entire area here becomes uh, right. rather than stopping the paving here, bringing it all back to the driveway, so that they can park in mm -hmm. one space rather than also having a curb cut, closing this curb cut up over here. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm fine. I don't have further questions at this point. Great. Thank you, Jean. So I had some of the same parking questions, and I'm now confused. So when I went by, there there are driveways on both sides. Left side, I think, didn't have any paving. It was grass. Right side had some paving. When this is completed, will there be driveways on both sides? Yes. Yes, there will. Or will you be paving the part that is now grass on the left side? On the left side, yes. Um, it's it's okay. And, okay. and how? Find the drawing. Well, that was a good drawing because <laughs> it was blown up a bit. Okay. But this, this is existing paved area on the left side. We'll be reducing it to the required width and then extending it. At the same time, we'll be removing the concrete walk up to the porch and removing that porch and uh, second story addition. Right. So in a way, we're, we're wiping everything out from here to here. We're at, we are increasing front yard, technically, um, by reducing the width of the drive, but we are extending the depth of it. And in the back is the required usable open space. Yeah. So is there going to be some sort of barrier there so the cars going in can drive onto the back open space? How do you propose to prevent that from happening? We, we usually put fences around the properties so you know, that fence would have to be taken down and... Yeah, so, if, if my driveway is on the left, what's going to stop me from driving all the way back here? Well, I, I can't say how a user is going to use their property. We will have a fence there. Well, a fence... I'm thinking a fence here or some curb here so somebody can't drive up onto the required usable The desire is that will, that will be landscaped yard all the way from the edge of the driveway all, all the way through the yard, through the backyard. Sorry. But again, what, stop, what would stop me from, let's say I'm having some people visit me. I said, let me drive my car back here so my visitors can park in my driveway. I'm thinking there needs to be a curb here to prevent the cars from driving up onto the user. Right, we can space. put a fence right up to the end of the driveway, not all the way in the back, because we're going to put a fence in the middle of the yard, dividing both sides. And then this it, fence. Yes. And then we can, uh, that driveway is going to end, no, further to the front. Come up and show me. Mm -hmm. So the driveway is going to. Is that a better drawing? No? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. No, it's fine. <laughs> All right, that's fine right there. Uh, the driveway is going to end right over here. So we can see how we can put a fence right over here with uh -huh. a gate. And then there's going to be another fence dividing. So the uh -huh. whole yard, each yard is going to be fenced for privacy. Okay. So I'm pretty sure one of you can correct me that they're going to need buffers from the neighbor, neighboring yards because it's parking or not. I don't believe so in a two-family, Steve. Okay. I'll ask Steve to weigh in on this when we No, get to there is a buffer requirement. Um, it is a 
you know, it's a requirement for a vegetated buffer. Um, there is not a width specified. But this is a pre-existing non-conforming condition. That's this existing. is a pre-existing non-conforming condition, yes. Yeah, the drive on the left, there is an existing uh, driveway as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to see a vegetated buffer on both sides of the driveways. The, the other issue I have is um, there should have been a lead checklist provided to us, which is a requirement when for environmental design review. So I, I always ask for a lead checklist. Lead? Lead. Okay. Yeah, lead checklist because we'd like to see that you've considered the environmental impacts of what you're going to do. And I was also concerned that, um, oops. Gene, I know I'm interrupting everything, but is that a requirement for a two-family house? Unfortunately, it's a requirement, it's a requirement for, for the special permit. EDR. It's a requirement for yeah. the EDR review. Okay, yeah. fair enough. And, and the, the statement about sustainability was just pretty cursory, I thought, and I think we needed some more detail about those issues. So while I, I agree with my colleagues that I think this is going to be a really nice improvement, I do think that I would like to see the lead checklist and a little bit more about um, sustainability and the other requirements for environmental design review, which I did have open till I threw the page <laughs> um, which is um, projects are encouraged to incorporate best practices related to sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, and indoor environmental quality. So I'd like some understanding about what you're going to do for that, as well as the lead checklist. Good thing you can from the move over. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Steve. So uh, just, just circle back on your earlier question, question Madam Chair, yes. uh, regarding buffers. The provision is in section 6110A, and it's a sentence long. Side yards used for parking shall have a vegetated buffer when abutting a lot used for residential purposes to, mit mit to minimize visual impacts. So I could see that, I could see that as being a practical ask um, on this, on the eastern side of this property as you look towards the front. For the west side, it looks like you're essentially sharing a driveway with a sixplex, um, and I'm not really sure that, I don't know what kind of shared driveway arrangements you have, but I mean, it seems less practical to right. ask one for there. Right. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, so I see it looks like the sides are, where they bump out towards the rear of the building, they're going out four and a quarter feet. And how far from the front? Um, or if, um, to be more precise. What drawing would you like, Steve? Uh, the, this, this one is fine. Do, so right. roughly how, what's this distance? Oh, yeah, go, go back to one. That that's a good shot. It's it's probably about twelve feet. I oh, okay. Tell you exactly. No, there's. I mean, I took a I took a visit this this weekend, and one of the things I you know standing on the sidewalk in front of it, in front of the the building, like you can't even. I noticed that you know there are shed dormers on the on the third floor as it is, and you can't see them from the street. And I, you know, the where the widening of the building kind of follows the. Um, kind of follows the shape of the lot. I was basically questioning how far back one would have to be to even see the additions. Um, and I'm not sure you'd even, you know, if you were standing on the sidewalk right in front, I don't think you would see them in the middle. Um, I wanted to confirm that you are getting rid of the enclosed area above the front porch. Yeah, the front porch and the enclosed areas. And um, the last question, one other question. Uh, so typically, like if, um, you know, we have a set of residential design guidelines for single and two family homes. And I was wondering if um, you, had it, you had a chance to, if those were made available to you and what inspiration you might have taken from them. 
<laughs> well, I, I think in, um, it's been a while since I, I designed this, but it, it is, I think part of it was to um, have the entrances face the street. Um, there's coverings to the entrances, so there's a signal that the entrances are there, even though they're 12 feet back from the edge of the house. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the gambrel roof form is a is a traditional or historic form um, of residential architecture. Um, I that's fine if that's all you have. <laughs> Those are good answers. <laughs> so I, I came up with a I, I just as an exercise compared them, and I would have come, come up with a slightly different set of answers, but yours are fine. <laughs> Great. Any other uh, questions before we move to the public comment period? Okay. So at this time, we will open um, this docket up for public comment. Any member of the public joining us this evening who'd like to speak, please raise your hand. Great. So um, I'll remind everyone who's speaking to please introduce yourself with your first, last name, and address and you will have up to uh, three minutes to speak. So please. please. Thanks. Um, my name is Deb Bermudez. I um, live across the street, actually, at 19 Belknap Street. Um, and I'm speaking on behalf of my husband, Peter, and myself, as well as a few neighbors. Um, we'd like to start by thanking the board for their consideration of this permit, um, and the developer for responding to the neighborhood's initial outreach and for making the commitment, which has so far been honored, thank you, um, to make the construction process as neighborhood friendly as possible. Um, that said, we and other neighbors do have some concerns about the massing that naturally increases as the effort to maximize square footage are undertaken. The Belmarland neighborhood has historically and primarily been made up of modest owner-occupied single and two-family homes, and the two-family homes have often provided an affordable rental option, allowing those who do not yet afford to own an Arlington to gain. In the application, North America references three current buildings they suggest establish precedent and support that the design in their proposal is in keeping with adjacent structures. We just want to address the ways in which each one of those is ill-equipped to do that. Built in about 1910, 28 Belknap predates the zoning bylaws. It's by far larger than any home in the neighborhood, as well as larger than anything we believe would be permitted today. The height alone is over 38. Um, 18 to 20 Belknap, the project directly next door to 2224, came before the ARB in July, and the board ultimately approved it with special considerations to reduce massing, ensure that the height of the building did not exceed 35 feet, ensure that the half-story ceiling heights were compliant with state building code, and to decrease the FAR. It would be important to consider similar special considerations for this project tonight. Lastly, 13 to 15 Belknap, in addition to having significant structural defects that are currently being dealt with, has a height of over 38 feet, and having been built across the first year of COVID, might be well out of compliance in other ways as well. Of note is that the developer of these last two buildings has had all of their other projects in Arlington shut down for egregious violations, including the one next door. North America proposes to increase the overall height of 2224 by two feet, and to widen the building over 12 feet, six plus feet on either side, according to the addition diagram. I mean, I did notice that on the, the parking and dimension worksheet, the numbers seemed a little bit different than that. Um, we are concerned about the visible impact of this as it will reduce space between buildings and obscure sky. Um, there is an attached image there that was not in these images, um, but one that we took. Um, Belgium is not a large thoroughfare like Mass Ave. It does not afford a four-lane road, a wide swath of sky, and longitudinal views down its length. While having larger residential units on a road like Mass Ave may help provide definition and structure, Taller, wider, and more imposing units on a narrow street like Belknap begin to feel oppressive. We would encourage members of the board to visit the site if you haven't yet done so, um, to consider our concerns relative to massing, and to permit a structure at 22 to 24 Belknap that helps maintain Belmarlin's character and limits overshadowing, both figuratively and literally, the community that lives there. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, are there other members of the public who wish to speak on this topic? Please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is already uh, 56 out of three. I appreciate the comments of the board regarding the driveway on the left side of the house. And I really question whether that is uh, pre existing, non conforming. It's certainly pre existing, but is it legally non conforming? Has the developer shown you that that existed prior to the enactment of the zone bylaw that limits 
five ways to one, but not finding a discussion uh, of the CBA billboard, I've uh, been a special permit person in Blackburn. I suspect that that was never been granted a special permit. And while I recognize that, that you can do that, they've asked for that relief, the standard is that um, a second driveway is necessary and convenient for public interest. And I really don't think that it is. You know, to, this is a big lot, it's a two-family house, nobody needs two parking spaces. And it's very unusual in a situation like this to, to grant a second parking space. Um, particularly when it, right now it's in the front, auto, the front yard. And the zoning bylaws explicitly says that front yard parking is contrary to the policy of the town. Of the town. So I do hope the board um, denies that part of the uh, the application requires only one driveway, and I fully agree with Mr. Revelack that having two driveways side by side is really just a problem. So it's really the same. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to speak on this docket? Seeing none, we will close public comment uh, and turn it back to the board. Um, so I have a couple of notes for us to discuss uh, before moving to a motion. Um, the first is I'd like for us to talk a bit about the, the driveway, um, whether or not two driveways are what we would like to approve or whether or not um, vegetation on one side of the driveway is something that we'd like to, um, to see added to the project. Um, Jean also brought up the subject of a lead checklist. Um, I personally would feel very comfortable with the owner working together with staff in terms of um, identifying any sustainability measures that they are um, intending to incorporate into the project. I think that that was written in, again, knowing the um, projects that we typically see for EDR with more um, mixed use, large scale residential and commercial in mind. Um, I think it's a little bit more challenging for a two family. Um, and uh, personally, again, I, I think I would be comfortable uh, moving forward and uh, deferring that to, to staff personally. But again, we should talk about what we all feel comfortable um, with there. So uh, Ken, I'll turn it over to you first. Um, and again, those are the two topics I've identified. If there are others, um, let's just identify those now first, and then we can go through and have a discussion. Are there any others that I missed? Um, I'm not sure. Nothing that you missed, but one thing we had to a little bit was um, we had mentioned fencing, and I don't know if you guys had ideas of what the fencing would be like, because we did have other properties that, you know, put kind of fencing in that didn't really match the architecture that was put up, um, and it looked, you know, to me, it didn't seem to kind of be consistent, so I don't know if you have images. Great. And I think that was when we had fencing in the front yard situation, oh, this, yeah, this and this is, is in the back, yeah, correct? The back. Right. So there's no plans for the front. Well, since we, uh, but but the front yard yeah, yeah, adjacent yeah. to the sidewalk, you would not be installing fencing, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Any other topics? I, I do want to continue a similar Please. topic, but yeah. it's just a little off a little bit. Is there any cross easements between your neighbor and you? Because your your garage, I would say, a good. Mm -hmm couple of feet is over the property line so I mean and then if I look at uh, it's really small but I think it's in like a nine foot driveway on their side so they must drive on your driveway to get back there don't they um, I, I wasn't that when I drove by there this afternoon I didn't quite see that clearly enough okay that's why I was sort of, I saw that it was a shared driveway, and that's where it got to me where I say, what if you, if you put all the parking on one side? Because then you have, you, you have the access of having uh, all the cars, and they won't be even in tandem if there's a shared agreement with you guys saying. Well, to your answer, I would have to actually ask the attorney if there's any, not that I'm aware of at this point. So 
Um, however, I know that it's a larger development on that, that side, and I don't know if it's a mall, um, many owners or not, so for me to go into an agreement with them to use their driveway is not the ideal, you know, even though it's a shared driveway, there's, like, they decided to put a fence, there's nothing that I can do about the same way if I decided to put a fence, there's nothing that I can do about Well, when you bought the property, uh, it would yeah. be, it would have been on a site plan um, noting the easements. I mean, your garage is clearly three, four feet over the property line. And um, I'm sure their driveway and your driveway is, is a shared driveway. So I respect Gene's comment about putting some sort of bushes there. And I think you can do that on the left side. There's enough room if you shift this, if you shift the driveway over a little bit, you can't put some bushes there and give you some yeah, sort of coverage. Right. But on the right side, it would be next to impossible to do that because there's two driveways that are, are the same. Mm -hmm. When I look at it, I can't tell where the property lines change because it's one driveway. You know, and, and I assume it looked like it was paved the same time. It wasn't like there's a joint. There's, there is none. So when I first looked at it, I thought it was an easement where you guys shared a driveway. Um, I don't know what you guys think about that. Um, I can go either way right now. Okay. Um, but that's the only thing I have for Great. anything like that. And what is your feeling on the lead checklist? Uh, I think that could be working, worked out administratively. Okay. Um, with a residential, it's not as, uh, um, it's not as intense as the commercial one. Great. Thank you. Melissa. Um, are we discussing what Ken said about the, um, I think buffer. driveways in general. Driveways yes. in general. Number <laughs> and, <laughs> number and uh, buffer, buffering. Um, I mean, where I see like there's potential more for the buffering. I mean, I, I would leave it up to, you know, kind of where the board stands with okay. that. And then as as we go with this administratively, you know, kind of following up on the lead gui uh, the guidelines, that's fine with me. Okay. So, Gene, be comfortable. They're, they're both the lead checklist and what they're going to do for sustainability. I don't want to leave that to the staff. I think that's something that should come back to us to take a look at and to make the decision about. I don't want us to get in to yeah, the precedent okay. where people don't file okay. checklists. They just say something very cursory about sustainability and then we send it back to the staff for administrative review. I think that's our responsibility and I don't want it to go to the staff. I think they should put a buffer, just a little vegetated buffer really is all that's needed on the to, left To driveway. the plan, plan west driveway. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. On the side where it makes sense. Um, to put it, um, to Mr. Loretti's point, since they're only really required to have one car per unit, I think there's enough space to park one car on each side so it's not in the front setback. So I don't think that's really an issue um, that we have. On Kin's concern about who owns the combined driveway, I really don't think that's our concern. <laughs> I think it's something that they or whomever buys the condos are going to have to work out with the people next door. And if, you know, if, if I were going to be buying one of the condos, I would certainly want to know that before I bought the condo, if I were buying the condo. That was on um, the left side. Um, so I'd like them to come back so that we have a chance to review the lead checklist and what they're going to do for the sustainability pieces to see if we're satisfied um, with them. That's where I am on it. Okay, thank you, Jean. Steve. Um, I would like to just, um, a question for the design team. The ex height of the existing structure is 32 feet. Is that correct? Change. 
So I'm looking on sheet. Um, Decimal feet, it's uh, 32.9 inches. inches, I don't know. Oh, yeah, 30. Okay. 32.4, it looks like. Looks like 32.4, and, yeah. and the height of the, uh, with the proposed alterations? Thirty-four so, feet, thirty-four so, feet eight and a quarter. So less than less than a two-foot change, it, under thirty-five. Okay, that um, re, I have. Um, that was the main question I had for regarding the lead checklist. Um, I mean, I I agree with Mr. Benson that it is something that we normally do, and I understand his concern about it. I'm wondering if. We could, for rather than bringing the applicant back, in and w having them wait a couple of weeks, if we could, like, craft a motion. Well, impose just make a make a do some sort of condition, like it should be at least lead X, <laughs> or. My my concern with that is that we don't have a stipulation for other applicants in terms of what level of mm, lead okay. certification we require them. Um, I think if we wanted to see it, I agree that I, I don't think that we should hold them up um, for uh, just for, for that document. Um, I think that we could, again, craft a motion whereby um, that is reviewed administratively with, again, and it, it could be continue, you know, there, there could be input from, you know, members of the board who are interested in providing input at that, at that time, but we'd have to craft that into um, a condition in the motion, yes. Yeah, let me just say, it's partially the lead checklist, but it's also partially encouraged to incorporate best practices related to sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, indoor environmental quality. I think those are especially important in, in these types of things, separate than LEED, and I think it's our obligation, not the staff's obligation, to do that. I think it needs to come back to us. And I, I don't think that we hold other projects to that same standard when we review uh, their their projects, especially when it comes to interior air quality, et, et cetera, um, personally. So I, I think that that would be onerous for this particular applicant. Steve, your thoughts? Yeah, and I mean, I guess the, the, the question is, the, que the main question I have is if we're asking the applicants to come back, I'd like to, I'd like to have a very concrete understanding what we're going to do with the results of the checklist and how that might influence our decision. Right. Um, that is a great question. And again, when I feel that most of the applicants that we see for EDR give us a cursory um, look at the checklist and but honestly, not much is done with it in their projects, and I and I just I feel that it's onerous, especially on a project that is not a um, commercial or large scale project, to um, to hold up this project for for that. Given that we don't typically hold um, other other projects with that to that same standard. Rachel? There's at least one project. And I can't remember which one, where we said you need to do better with lead, you need to come back with better, and that could happen with this if it came to us, and the staff can't make that decision. I disagree. I mean, I, I disagree. I believe that the staff they have, um, they have team members who are more than exactly they are, they are more than adequately trained to do that. Also, Richard, I believe this is a gut rehab, right? Yes, sir. I mean, what you're doing here is not, you're, you're down to the bones. Yes, sir. So anything they put back in, it's going to be higher efficiency. It's going to meet the new uh, yes. uh, the energy yes. codes yes. and so forth like that. 
they're not going to do that. And so, so it's not only uh, human development reviewing that, it's also going to be in special services reviewing that because it's going to have to meet all the new energy codes. So it's going to have the low flow toilets, it's going to have the low flow shower heads, it's going to be all that stuff there. And Is there going to be any fossil fuel? Is there going to be any fossil fuel use in the building? Well, that's just one thing that you're imposing. But I'm just uh, asking. Yeah, right now, we're going to the gas furnace. Yes. Okay. There's a gas line, and they're going to the gas furnace. But can I? I'm sorry, I want to no, go back. No, please, please go. I want to go back. I, I don't think I made myself clear enough, okay? But when if you get rid of one driveway on the left-hand side, and you park further down the driveway here, you get you get rid of all the cars on the front of the, on the front of the block. Right now, you have when you go down the street, you see all the cars right in the front yard, and in, in, in front of the house. And I'm just trying to say, you know, and maybe you're right, Gene. The uh, who owns the property there and all that stuff. Maybe, maybe, maybe I correct. You know, it's not really our concern, but it is because. If you can park two cars in that garage and you park two cars over the side here, uh, you're in the same. Why well, are you guys always looking like right when I'm? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it gets yeah. it gets all the cars out of the, the front yard. You know. Uh, so. Well, Ken. Oh, Ken. I'm chair. Yes. Um, <laughs> Ken, can you explain that to me? So you're saying move this, remove and then that. allow. Would it be tandem? No, no. You look at the look at this drawing here. Uh, it's the one that's up on the screen that Ken's referring to. So the parking is planned north. There's a significant parking field in front of the driveway. Um, and he's suggesting to get rid of the driveway plan east that, okay. here. That image is as is right now, so it doesn't show the additions. With the, yeah, yeah so exactly. Yeah, so when the additions are done, you're not going to be able to have, it's going to have to be tandem parking that you just place yes. not a Right, and tandem parking we know is not the proposal, ideal. If you put on a proposal plan, you're going to be able to better there's not and I just checked with the attorney there's no easements the garage was built that way and it is on the literally on the on the on oh, 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 your neighbor's property I'm living there yeah plenty of it right now okay so if I look at this so that's not that's not the proposed I think the, the proposed would be better to yeah but it doesn't show all the way down the driveway that's see that's but you only have from the from the lot line to the to, to the corner of the house. You only have 16 feet, and if that's not even from the, you're gonna you know you won't be able to fit two cars side by side. Not a six, not at that point there, but if you go further down, it it is it the, the site winds up. This is killing me. I know, me too. Back here. Well, this is the uh, yeah. It's page 11. Claire, if you could go to page 11 sure. of this. Yeah. All the way over to the right. And then up, uh, yeah. Hold on, my computer may not be. That's fine. Sorry, I'm getting too far fetched done. Just. Well. But that's, that's what I was trying to get at. Because you, you know you see, because you, you you see all these cars in the front yard. So that includes the um, the additions on either side. Yes. In the site plan, right? So I see what you're saying, Kim. Excuse me for a second. Could you yep. park here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. From here to here. To you have a scale that you can look at. What I'm saying is to have two cars parked here. I'm not sure that we have enough clearance for two parking spots right here. Well, there's two parking spots that go into the garage. Going over the lot lines. You're counting going over the lot lines. Well, how is she going to get? How is she going to park in the garage? You, you don't have to. You might not have to. If you don't want to. Is, yes. Is the garage? ownership or is it only assigned to one unit? I don't have that answer. I don't know. I really don't. I haven't talked about that yet. Hmm. 
I would assume one, the left, the right side would be the owner of the garage because for the phone, you know, you would There's keep no the other access. access. And then right. you have to give the other people right. access. So I'm, a, I'm thinking about now, I'm pretty sure just the right side is on the garage. Uh -huh. I mean, the goal on our team is to make this as close to as separate as possible. Also, the park is one thing because then you don't, it's you, you Okay, there's no you know maintenance it's your driveway left side and only like almost like two different <coughs> like a townhouse situation exactly that's right. exactly what we're going for these two townhouses right no i understand what you're trying to get and yeah. and i'm not trying to fight you <laughs> i'm just trying to say oh. what i see on the street and if i can get some of the cars off the front of the front lot push down the back that would be a desired from our part that's all and if the board feels differently then i will Say okay, I will go with the board. Madam Chair, I don't have an issue with it, Steve. So, um, there, I've seen other, at least one other case. I don't remember the address. This was um, something that came before the ZBA, but it started with a two-family home that had a similar arrangement to that, where one side was a shared driveway between them and another property, and. Everyone was parked, everyone in the two family was parking on one side, three or four car, like three cars deep. And if someone needed to come out, they would have to back, you'd basically have to back a whole bunch of cars out onto the street and then move them back in. And what they were appearing before the ZBA in order to get a second driveway to avoid the traffic congestion. <laughs> so in a sense, I, you know, there might be, you know, you could you could make an aesthetic argument against having the second driveway, but from a circulation standpoint, um, sometimes it can make sense. I would agree. I, I personally don't feel that tandem parking is ideal, but I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I think if there was more room and they could, they didn't have a tandem parking situation, it would be different. I'm, I'm always willing to get along. Okay. <laughs> Uh, any other? For something, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> any other topics that we'd like uh, to to bring up? All right. Uh, is there a motion to um, approve this project as submitted? Well, look, before I do that, I just want to confirm you are agreeable in terms of adding the vegetation to the driveway between a, a buffer. Uh, Plan east, yeah, or excuse side. me, plan west. Yeah, correct. Okay. And then you mean just on the front, on the frontage, not all the way because it's going to be fenced, just on the left side. Or correct. All the way, all Along the, the parking. Okay, that's no problem. The paved area. Yeah, you okay. guys probably tell us which what you want. And you can okay. Uh, so, is there a motion to approve the um, plans as submitted with the addition of a vegetated um, buffer strip on the driveway plan west? and a request to follow up with a uh, lead checklist with uh, the staff of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I believe we also discussed a fence. And the addition of a uh, fence at the rear of the driveway plan west. They do show a fence there already. Oh, okay. But, no, no, no. but yeah, they do. Go to this. Go to this plan here, uh, and it shows a fence going across the end of the driveway. We'll we'll just add that 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 in. So that with the um, stipulation that the plan no the, the, the fence. Okay. Is there a uh, a motion? Uh, is there somebody who would like to? move so motion. with those <laughs> considerations. So so moved by Ken. Is there a second? I will second. Okay. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Aye. Jean? No. Melissa? Yes. Uh, Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations. You've been approved. Appreciate you coming forward. And that closes uh, docket number one second. Too many windows open. Docket number uh, 3723. Uh, so you'll be able to follow up um, following this meeting with uh, Kelly and Claire from the department who will uh, take you through the next steps. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming in this evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Uh, so we will now move on to our third agenda item, um, public hearing for docket number 3717, 80 Broadway. Uh, so this is the proposal for a mixed-use building containing retail, commercial, and residential units at 80 Broadway. Um, I will first turn it over to the Department of Planning and Community Development um, for an introduction um, based on their public hearing memorandum. Then we'll turn it over to uh, you, the applicants. Um, the board will ask questions and uh, ask for some clarifications. We'll have public comment and then uh, the board will deliberate on uh, next steps. Great, so I will turn it over to Claire. All right, so uh, the applicant proposes to replace an existing single-story commercial building with a five-story mixed-use building, um, which would include a ground floor retail area of about 1,500 square feet, second floor office commercial space of roughly 900 square feet, but all in all, more than 1,000 foot increase to the total commercial area, which is great. Um, they would also add nine residential units to the upper floors, um, which will trigger our inclusionary zoning. Um, one of the units uh, shall be deed restricted affordable. Um, the use is both allowed and encouraged in this area um, and is in compliance with the master plan. Great, thank you. Uh, so uh, I'll Ask whoever uh, from your group is planning on doing the presentation to please introduce yourself, and you'll have up to 10 minutes. Um, we did have the materials ahead of time, so um, I think if you wanted to give us an overview and then any specific features that you'd like to, to call out, that would sure. be really helpful. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. So my name is Rob Costello. I'm one of the principals with my partner, Paul O'Connell. Uh, we're joined by David Fried, our architect. This is our team. Uh, I'm a resident of Arlington. Thompson School is right, right around the corner. I've had my eye on the site for some, quite some time. Um, and before we get into the details, I did want to say that we've done development work in other areas, and they, um, particularly Kelly, and, and welcoming uh, Director Ricker. Um, we've had the best communication we've ever had. And then, so, Great to hear. Um, Thank you really, for yeah, it's satisfying as a, as a resident of town. So, yeah, we, we we're interested. I mean, the, the site clearly needs redevelopment and fits with the master plan. Um, we're excited about the possibility and the privilege of developing this site. Uh, one thing is that Paul and I um, are interested in holding this as apartments, and uh, it's not a it's not a condo play, so to speak. Uh, I think, particularly given Arlington's need for housing, but also just what fits our portfolio, and so we're looking forward to the opportunity to try to increase the density and also be a key impact on Broadway, which. From a personal perspective, I know is is, is much needed. And it's been we're talking 20 years of discussions about what could happen on Broadway. So um, that's what we're, <laughs> we're looking forward to trying to come together on a project. Um, and uh, I will just say, and as an aside, uh, Mr. O'Connell is also his, his his first project in Arlington 17 years ago. He recently completed the Johnny D's project on Holland Street in Davis Square. He's, experienced on the ground, so we have, a, and, and David's an experienced develop, uh, architect, so we feel we have a good team to present something for your input. So I'll turn it over, with that I'll turn, unless Paul has anything else to add. Oh, you did a great job. Thank, thank you. I'll turn, turn it over to David. Uh, thank you, Rob Fitt. Uh, my name is David Fried. I'm an architect at Chewing Company um, in uh, Lucy. Can we turn down the fan? We cannot, no. unfortunately. No, I mentioned that at the beginning. I know you weren't here at the beginning. It, unfortunately, we weren't able to. So, Chris, thank you. Oh, thank you. I'll just ask that you could, if you could project, that would be helpful. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Yes. Thank you. So, our proposed project is a uh, new five story building on the uh, corner of um, Broadway and Winter Street. Um, it is a site-specific building. It will have a commercial, commercial space on two floors. It will have nine um, apartments, one of which will be affordable, six parking spaces. There will be new street trees and site plantings, and uh, we're planning for a rooftop solar array. Next slide, please. Uh, so I brought a pointer, if that helps. Um, 
Right now, our parcel is right here. It's 6,770 square feet. Uh, the existing building is, is set back in the far corner of the site and is surrounded by asphalt um, with um, two extensive curb cuts both on Broadway and Winter Street. It's a sort of unfriendly pedestrian and street streetscape experience. Uh, next slide, please. This bird's eye view uh, shows, shows the existing condition of our site. And one thing that's interesting is the um, the houses along Winter Street are parallel and perpendicular to the street. The houses along um, Broadway are parallel and perpendicular to the side lot lines and the rear lot lines, but they have this sort of step back quality, which is, I think, very interesting. Um, next slide, please. Uh, these are views down Broadway, views down Winter Street. This is the existing condition site plan. Um, as you can see, the, the existing buildings is in our back corner, and uh, there are some small site plantings along the, uh, uh, the front lot lines. Sorry. Next slide. Next slide. Right. Thank you. Uh, on the right is our um, architectural site plan, and um, we're proposing to close the curb cut on Winter Street, reduce the curb cut on Broadway. Um, the building is organized where there's a one-story building that is our commercial component that fronts Broadway and is parallel and perpendicular to that. And by doing so, it kind of opens up the corner a little bit for a small plaza. And the upper four stories, um, the, sort of the residential block, uh, are parallel and perpendicular to the buildings on Winter Street. And our building on the upper stories aligns with the front faces of those buildings on Winter Street. Uh, our parking will be below the building, um, set back in the, in the rear and on the side. <coughs> on the left is our first floor pl um, uh, proposed plan. Uh, there's 1,500 square feet of commercial space uh, that fronts, has two entrances, one on Winter and one on Broadway. We have a, a residential entrance set back um, on Winter Street that aligns with the other buildings. Uh, we provide long-term bike storage for the residents. Uh, the elevator is dual use, so the commercial space has uh, dedicated um, accessible access to the second floor. Uh, we have parking for six vehicles, one of which will be deemed a handicap parking space. Uh, next slide, please. The, in general, the, the, the plans are organized with three units on each floor. They range in size from about 716 square feet to 828 square feet. And then when we go to the fifth floor, we have a, a larger unit that's about 1,100 square feet. And uh, we provide outdoor space for the, the, the unit itself and for a common roof deck um, that fronts Winter broad, Broadway. So it would be away from the residential, um, from the direct butters. And then finally on the roof, we would um, we have, I think, around 1,600 square feet of solar proposed. Uh, next slide, please. Our building would be 55 feet tall. The first floor is um, 13 feet, and then each residential floor is 10 foot 6. Uh, next slide. Uh, the Broadway elevation on the left uh, shows our commercial space right there. The upper three stories would be set back, and they have sort of a stepping quality to them. And finally, on the fifth floor um, is, is further set back. The uh, garage entrance is, is located right here. The building would be, um, the materials would be uh, fiber cement panels for the commercial uh, component, and then um, fiber cement lap siding and panels for the upper stories. And finally, on the uh, top, we would have um, standing seat versa lock um, metal panels. The elevation on the far right is our Winter Street elevation. Um, the, the residential entrance would be signified by 
um, a small canopy along with a change in material, uh, something like a fiber cement uh, wood look, or maybe wood, depending on, on what the team body chooses. Um, next slide, please. That's a rendered view uh, of our proposed project. Uh, we're thinking that we would plant the, the two streets with um, columnar uh, ginkgo trees, which would be a nice contrast color-wise with the colors of the building itself. Next slide. Uh, these are just views from Revit that we didn't fully render, but just to show some of the massing and the, and the kind of pedestrian experience and the scale of the project. Uh, our signage uh, would be, um, we'd have a sign board and uh, we're proposing either halo illuminated letters or just letters which we mounted directly to, to, to a sign board or to the uh, facade itself. Um, there would be some lighting as well along the, the piers of the, of the building and, and the residential entrance. Next slide. So these are shadow studies. Um, 9 a.m. is always on the left, 3 p.m. is always on the right. So I started with fall. And you can see that um, our building casts some shadows to the direct the letters. But as we go to noon, um, the orientation of the sun, we don't really cast shadows on the direct the butters. And then as we go to 3 p.m., the shadows are cast onto Broadway itself. That condition carries through for all the seasons. It's really the worst in the fall and the winter, just at 9 a.m., between 9 a.m. and 12 noon. Next slide, please. Spring and then summer, very minimal. That's a lot. And that, that really wraps up the presentation. Great. Thank you very much. Anything else before we turn it over to the board? Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate the thorough, um, the thorough presentation and the thorough uh, set of materials that were submitted. Um, so. Ken, I will uh, let you kick it off with any questions or clarifications um, that you'd like to ask of the applicants. And then again, we'll save any deliberation for uh, after public comment. Well, I'll start off. I like the project. I think it's, uh, it, fits there, it fits there very well. It's what we've been looking for. Um, I, sh I just do want to go down uh, the list of uh, relief you're looking for okay and uh, I believe the first list of relief is the number of parking spaces right uh, you're required nine and you're providing six in because the commercial space is below I believe 2,000 square feet you're not required to provide any on-site parking for them so there's no parking required there okay. so, so the only thing you're asking for is relief for uh, residential parking from nine to six but you, and then um, you're also requiring relief for the open space or are you counting the open space uh, as part of the roof deck up top the roof deck does count for the So even with that uh, counting, you're still insufficient. If you add the square footages all together, uh, down below and up above, excluding the requirement of having 20 by 20, do you, do you still meet the requirements? No, it's a question. I thought I, mean, I might be wrong. It, it, per their table, they are under for. Um, per their table, they're showing that they meet both, but I don't think they have the twenty by twenty. See, with open space, the open space has to contain a square that's twenty by twenty, and then part, part of that square is then 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 you're able. To, say that is part of your open space and if apertures stick off from that you're okay i believe uh, that's what I, I thought okay unless they're seeking relief from that that's what i'm asking right. yeah. okay right. I know we know we're under on the, the, the open space and to address your first question 
quickly on the parking. Um, the, I, I understand initially it's one space per, unit, per dwelling unit now, and then the Attorney General's office recently allowed for the, for the board to go down to 25% of the requirement, which would be three parking spaces. So we felt six was appropriate immediately it was to, to the usage in the space and what we've seen going on in urban Yes, we'll, we'll, I'm not. Yeah, we're not questioning that. We're just, <laughs> well, just we're to just run, through running through the, the list. Yeah. 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 Yep, yeah. understood. And I, I'm yeah. not saying I disagree with you or agree yeah. with you. I'm just just want to. Yes, we are, at, we are looking for relief. Well, okay. That, we feel that six six is, is a reasonable uh, midway. And I believe your setbacks are okay. When I looked at one. Yes. Setbacks or the setbacks? Setbacks are not required for mixed use in the before. Right. So it's. Yeah. So it's nothing, no the set. Front and side yard setback. The rear yard setback, I think it depends on the dimensions. So I, I just want to understand what we're approving here and what you're asking for. That's all. Yep. And, uh, and if and I, I believe that there was one other, the drive aisle width dimension, correct? Yes. Is not 20 feet. It's 18 feet, right? No, it's not uh, 24. It's 24. 24. 24. Sorry. It's 20. My area yeah. gets reduced down to 20 feet. Okay. Uh, I'm fine with this. The only thing I, I do want to ask is, will you be willing to up on the upper level, I mean up on the second level, you potentially could maybe put a corridor out there and have a deck out there too for open space um, between your commercial space and your residential space. Couldn't maybe put a little small corridor so you're separating your noise and everything else there too, but it allows you to get some, some additional open space up top there. So just so I follow you, Mr. Lauer, so on the... Uh, Can we go to the second floor? Above, above the first floor there on that, that yeah. rooftop, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we can certainly consider just it. Think, look into that. Um, yeah, I think it would come to about, after some safety measures, probably <clears throat> six, seven hundred square feet. Something so, something up there yeah, that could be uh, as additional yeah. you know, open space there that, that could be you know, a garden or whatever be, be, be out there, you know? Yeah, I mean, they, to that point, I mean, my kind of vision for this building is always been to have something, maybe a cafe or something there that really is more for the community along the street mm -hmm. and, and more walkability. So maybe seating upstairs, some stairs, you know, open through the ceiling that goes up there. I don't, I don't know, but the, to your point, yeah, it would be. Would the wine shop be coming back? I mean, possibly, I, I have had discussions with them. I know them well. Mm -hmm. Gary, and, uh, I've, I've offered to them. I don't. I don't know the, the realities of the finances of it. Would, okay. Would work, but we are open to it. We've told them we're open to it. That could be a nice little area up there where you can have little mm -hmm. tastings and cheese and stuff. Mm -hmm. It'd be open to the public, you know. I'm just getting a little. Okay. Um, for now, I think of that. I think. That's all I had for you guys. Um, I, I like the project. I think this, this is the kind of project we're looking to push ahead on the, you know, Broadway and um, Mass Ave um, uh, corridors there. You know, I think it's a good scale and proportion. So. Great. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Melissa. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's an exciting project for you know, Broadway, and so um, I think I, like Kim, kind of like to try to carve out a little bit of the open space, so above that building, I was also looking at that, I don't know if you can incorporate that to the commercial, or that would be separate from the residential, right? Is that what you're talking about? Um, so here you're saying above in this space? Above the, yeah. above, yeah, right up there, yes. And then when you when you were thinking about it, it would be some kind of open space connected for the re the commercial, not behind it for the residential there. It could right. be either one, but you just come out, if you look at the second floor plan, okay. you can sort of go out like through a corridor there. Yeah, can I just speak to that for yeah. a second? So to that point, the second floor would have about 900, I don't know, there we go, 891 square feet of commercial. And we did that on purpose because um, we didn't want to lose that 3,000 square feet that you can do without parking. And then in addition, I just know I, I own a couple other properties in town that are filled with therapists in those upper
corporate level kind of functions. It's a great spaces. Space. Yeah. Really, they really do do well as, as far as use. And so we thought, well, why we'll try to deal with the parking challenges on this lot when we could could, could capture some of that three thousand square feet. So that was the point. Great. So so to your to your question, mm -hmm. it would I believe if you if I can just step up. Yeah. So that the this section would be some sort of roof deck if we did went that route. It would tie into this area, I think is your point. And then the next unit, residential unit, would be over on this side. So Okay. So yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if we could explore that, that would be uh, favorable to kind of, I think, Ken's thinking, my thinking on that. Um, and then, I don't have a lot of questions on this. I think for the essence of what you're complying with by, you know, for the master plan and a lot of the other elements for this district seem fine. I mean, there's some things in terms of I know that we don't have this, not the setback, but the step back mm -hmm. is a little bit more challenging for this zoning district, correct? Okay. Yes, Kelly. Okay. That, Please, go I ahead. Just, yeah, Please. I, just, uh, I think one of the things the board may want to consider is whether, so the step back, you could potentially interpret it as well, they're providing a step back on that second on floor, that thus, it's it's they're already provided right. on the fourth floor because right. they're not going straight up from the second floor. So that would just be one thing to consider. And then just understanding how that works dimensionally on both sides of the building because it seems like you're getting that on one side. I don't know if you're getting it on the Winter Street side. So that may be something that you would need to request a waiver for. The board may want to ask the applicant to reconsider. Um, I'm good for now with all that. Thank you, though, Kelly. Great, thank you, Melissa. Gene. Yeah, I, I agree with my colleagues. It's a very exciting project to have on Broadway and a great replacement for that little building that is there now with all the asphalt around it. And I have a few questions. I don't know if we can go what number slide it was. It's number seven on the ones that we got. Let me see, is that a couple of questions? Uh, sheet A11. Um, that's it. Okay, over here. Excellent. So, this is the residential lobby to get up to the elevator. Yes. If this commercial unit is rented to someone, yeah. wine shop or someone else, how do the second floor commercial folks get in? Do they go through the residential lobby or do they go? How do they make their way to the elevator? They would, they would go to the, the um, residential lobby. So there would be like a key fob in the elevator, so they would have limited access. So it's not solely a residential lobby, it's both residential and the second floor commercial. Yes. Okay. Um, is this supposed to be the handicap space? Yes. If the handicapped person comes around here, there's a set of stairs to get up to the elevator. Would they have to go around the front to get in? No, um, no there are actually no stairs there. That's just the dash line of the stairs above. Okay. They would just wheel right in. So they could wheel right it's in. All so right. That's, okay, yes. great. And um, there was a comment from the staff about needing the sizing of the spaces, which I see is on here, but I'm not sure it was on. I updated. Oh, so we have not on our drawings. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, so we would similarly, the shadow studies in the initial review were for the four story building, and other than just now, we haven't seen the shadow studies for the five story building. So we would need to see those too. Well, I submitted those with the. I, I didn't. I we didn't see those seen? either, actually. Yeah, we didn't get those. I don't think that those were in the packet no. that was posted. Yeah, I looked for them, and the only one shadow studies I could find were the initial one for the four-story building. So maybe I missed it, but I couldn't I, I, I didn't couldn't see it either. It. So that, and again, you heard me before, there's no lead checklist, which I would like to see. 
no one to stand. Solar on the roof, terrific, but it would be helpful to see the lead checklist and other things you're doing for sustainability. Um, in addition to asking for a reduction in parking, which we do on, you know, when it's appropriate and we've done it, you're asking for about half the amount of long-term bicycle parking spaces that are required. And there's a different standard for our determining whether to <coughs> the bicycle parking spaces as, a, as opposed to the car parking spaces. And it seems to me if we're going to reduce the car parking spaces, it'll be even more likely that people in this building will have and want to use bicycles. So I would ask you to go back and figure out how you're going to get 16 internal long-term parking, bicycle parking spaces, because that's what's required. And I don't think you'd meet the standard to get fewer um, than those. At least I, I don't think you'd meet the standard for those. The um, open space on the deck on top doesn't qualify as open space under the bylaw. Either has to be ground or one level up. So I don't know what to do about that. You need to think about it. You know, the suggestion about putting open space on top of the first floor commercial gets you part way there. And we'll have to decide what to do with part way there, <coughs> unless you can figure out some more. Um, what else did I want to ask you about? Um, So um, we usually ask the staff to work with the um, project on which one of the units or units will be affordable, but we usually have a better idea about what the units look like than what we've seen on this, which are just blank spaces. So I think we would probably need to see some more detail about the units. Can, can you elaborate on what a personal preference would be, just so we have a some guidance. The rooms and, you know. <coughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess, if, are you talking floors the number or size? Of bedrooms, number number of bedrooms, for example. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So One bedroom studios, two bedrooms. This should yeah. indicate where the bedrooms are. Yes. Where the bathroom is. Okay. You, you want to make sure that they're equitable. A comparable yeah. and equitable. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, there, there was a question that we got by email from a, um, person who often comments to us on projects coming before us, <coughs> who says that he thinks your declaration of 7,243 square feet of residential gross floor area under counts, and he wondered whether you counted um, is not only the interior size of the apartments, but also hallways, stairwells, elevators, etc. So what did your gross floor area include? Um, I believe my gross floor area included the, um, <coughs> the net area of all the residential, as well as the hallways and stairs. Not no, the, not the, the hallways, but not the stairs. Yeah, so you need to go back. I have to look at my... Yeah, you could come back and say, here's how I did it, sure. or not, because Counting, knowing what the gross floor area has to do with what the open space requirements are. So okay. we need to have a better understanding of what the actual gross floor area is. And it's, yeah, if you look at, I'm sure the staff can help you find in the regulations, the zoning bylaw, I mean, where we have what is. Um, gross floor area. Oh, no, no, sorry. You're saying... I, I gross floor area gross for floor the area. residential. Oh, right. gross floor area for residential was was everything aside from that commercial space. Oh, it was. It included stairways, yes. elevators? To the outside face of walls. Okay. Yes. Great. So you did include that. Okay. Great. Thank I you. I didn't hear you. I apologize. That's okay. No, that's we'll okay. Project. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, those are my questions. Oh, one other thing. So... I, 
you know, the, the regulation, the zoning bylaw says step back on the fourth floor on all sides that face the street. So the suggestion is, well, look, you have the commercial building coming out on Broadway, so effectively you've done the same thing with the commercial building, but I don't think you have that on the side street. So the question is, could you put a seven, what is it, seven foot, seven and a half foot step back on the fourth floor on, what's the name of the side street, I forgot, Winter, Winter Street. Um, if not, we'll have to decide what to do. If you could do it, then we don't, we're not faced with whether to say yes or no about that. Um, the other thing I question I have about the shadow study is the residential buildings that will be in shadow part of the time. It'd be helpful when we see the shadow study if you could, for each building, indicate to me or to us what period of time would be in shadow. And if I, any of the buildings have solar arrays on them, to indicate that also. Thank you. That's it. Great. Thank you, Jean. Steve. Okay, I, I do have a couple of questions. Uh, the first, re regarding open space, um, there were a few places in the application where I got a sense that open space was calculated as a percentage of 6,770 square feet. Was that how it was calculated? So there were, um, looking through the, some of the dimensions and the plans, like on sheet A0, um, I th and this is too small for me to read right now, but I got the sense that some of, I felt like some of the open space numbers might have been calculated as a percentage of 6,770 square feet, which is the area of the lot. The lot so this is right, and it's not, that's not actually how the regulations work. It's a percentage of the gross floor area that's used for residential. Um, that, that is how I calculate. That is how you calculate. Yeah, okay. It's on my sheet A0, uh, in the, the top portion right here, if you have that sheet. Yeah, I just have to blow it up. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. I, I'm, just, I'm just making sure. <laughs> Okay, all right, so um, so can we uh, display sheet A1.0? I'm sorry, Steve, you were questioning whether it was based on 6,000. Yeah, so the lot. Which is what is shown, that it is based on the 6,000. Oh. 770. Feet. Yeah, so let, let, me look, let me look. In the zoning summary on the cover sheet. Usable. There was an update. Yeah, so landscaped open space, 596 yes. square feet divided by 6,770 yes. square feet. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that needs to be corrected. That needs to be corrected. That doesn't match up with what I have in the second In column. the table. Yeah, yes. Correct. Okay. My apologies. All right. No, it's just it, the first step is agreeing what the what the numbers are, <laughs> then we could argue over them. Um, now, regarding sheet, uh, right. he, he does have the other number in the in the, in the column next to it. He has seven thousand two hundred and forty-three. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, regarding sheet number A one point zero. Yep. Oh, next. Uh, this is good. I was just wondering if you could provide this dimension, roughly. Um, my guess is it's about eight feet. About eight feet? Yeah. I think there might be dimensions if we go back to oh. I didn't see a dimension. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's we about didn't see a lot of dimensions. Yes, we'll just need to have that. Confirmed. That was great. Uh, the, that question wasn't. I, I believe there's someone on the other side who's got a detached ADU and was, you know, wrote having 
expressing concern about cars that might be parking right up against it, yeah. but it sounds like you've got an eight-foot buffer. Yes. Okay. Um, so the upper story step back. So if we could go to sheet A 1.3. So more dimensions. Um, this is Winter Street. Yes. Um, what's I, I'd, I'd like to know what this dimension is, and also this one. Yeah, the, the, the roof deck width is 11 feet, and then uh, I believe I set back that face five feet from this. This is five feet. This is five feet? From, from the edge of the wall. Okay, and so there's, I mean, the requirement is seven and a half on, you know, on, on when it's facing a street. So here, if this is 11, you've got it. Yeah. Um, here, if this is five, then I mean, it would be nice for us to know what all of these are. Yeah, let's do yeah. No, Steve, Steve, it. Steve, actually, that's not. Uh, so this is the fifth floor, so they stepped it back two oh. through four. Oh, two through. So he's giving us an extra step back. It's not actually. <laughs> My, all right. Thank, thank you for. Thank Absolutely. You. Can I? Please. Right. Oh wait. Oh, should I wait or okay. is it on that? Does that speak to? Your question on the setback on the Winter Street? No? Still okay, so you were saying fourth story? Okay, I heard fourth. Fourth, story. okay. Yeah. My, I, yeah, okay. I write software for a living, so off by one mistakes are just a, a hazard of my profession. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, can we look at sheet A11? Yes. Yeah, so like Mr. Benson, I would also like to see um, the full complement of required bicycle parking. And this area is, is difficult because you've got a lot going on with the stairs and the elevator and the residential lobby. Just as, a, as an idea for consideration, um, you know, I thought perhaps you know, if these mechanical rooms could come out a little and this way and possibly providing for a second closet there. Um, it's just, a, just an idea. And... Um, uh, finally, um, have you given any, given any thought to a transportation demand management plan? Uh, I mean, we have, but <coughs> the scale of the project, we didn't, we didn't see it as something that we deemed necessary, but the board would like to see it. I mean, it's, it's not a particularly large pro project. So but. I'll just say that um, we are. <coughs> We're happy to consider, in order for us to be able to consider a reduction in your parking requirement to the 25%, okay. we are actually required, required to, uh, to um, review your transportation demand management plan. Okay. So that is, um, if we review that and, and deem that it um, allows us to, to accept the requested reduction, <coughs> yep. that will be one of the things that triggers that. Okay. Yeah. All right. and it's a residential. Right. And that's pretty clearly spelled out in the zoning bylaw in terms of what your options are, and there are many options for you okay. to choose from here. Okay. Yep. I missed that. That's okay. Detail, so thank you. I've not, I think I've taken up enough of everyone's time, so nothing yeah, further. Those are all very good. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, um, let's see, most of my questions have been already covered by um, my colleagues. I'll just mention a few things um, aesthetically that I'd, I'd love for you to, to take a, a look at here. Um, I really appreciate the way that you have separately articulated the commercial space from the residential building above. Um, one thing I'd love to see, if you could actually, um, Claire, um, go to uh, the, um, the perspective that's kind of the corner, one of the renderings. Uh, that's perfect. Um, <coughs> the cornice on the um, the the first floor commercial, um, if that could have um, a bit more definition, it, it feels um, a little flat to me right now. And um, I think we're trying to to move away from the aesthetic of some of the um, more industrial looking spaces that that were were there. And again, I, I really appreciate what you've done in the upper floor. I think. Um, to I, I really like the the wood look, um, which which highlights the the residential entry. I think I just like to to look at the cornice and some of the materiality at the commercial space 
again, I, I like the storefront windows. Um, it, it's really just the materials and the, the corners itself. I'd like for you to, to take area, another so the gray the gray area. It's the flat fi it's the flatness of the fiber cement. Sure. So whether it's another material or perhaps some more articulation there. Again, I just um, would love to again since that's the 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 facade that the public is going to interact with yeah. to have that more detailed. Sure. Yeah. That's that's all. Okay. And again, I, I really like what you've done with the. With the with the rest of it there. So, so I could I could project out a foot or something and have more of a, a cap or paint put on that. Uh, again, I I I ask you to take you know you have for example a little bit um, more of um, a, a cornice with some scale to it um, above that may or may not be appropriate given again that it's it's the the first story but I'd like you to, to study that yeah. a little bit more and and just see what we can come up with you know it could be that once you. If you decide to look at um, incorporating one of the, the questions about adding some um, outdoor space above that, that when you add, again, a railing or some sort of protection, that that plays into, again, making that feel more um, substantial, that, that may solve your, your issue there. But again, I just would love to, to have that studied a bit further. Um, and then my other comment was that I would love the signage to be lit again, whether that's externally lit or internally lit for the um, for the uh, commercial space. I know that you had two options: one which was unlit and and one potentially lit. Um, I do think it's important to have this lit, but I'm open to again whether that's through external lighting or internal lighting. Great. Those are the only questions and comments. Um, that I had at this time. Any other questions before we move to public comment? Well, you, <clears throat> please. Well, you mentioned in that if we just turned, uh, you know, the driveway site. Uh, oh, yep. Actually, that something there uh, that felt really <clears throat> unresolved. That that yeah. That right there, it, it's is it, not. It's, you never build that. It's going to be a little lower down because you, you, you have the structure there, but then you have the floor level. You, you need to soft it there for like plumbing and whatever else. So it's, it's actually going to be a little more deeper and it'll look proper now too. Right now it looks like it's um, a giraffe with little legs sticking up and it doesn't look quite, um, but you know what I'm saying. So you're going to have to look at another band or something that, that articulates that area a little bit more. Yeah, I would say that actually that, that whole corner there um, where it wraps around the commercial space into the, the parking area, that, that felt a bit unresolved, um, and it would be great to, yeah. to take another look at that okay. corner as well. And again, that will be fairly prominent as you come down Broadway, yeah. so I, I really think that's important to take a look at, too. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thanks, Ken. I have forgotten that on my list. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions or comments before we move? Um, just one comment. Please. Just in terms of, I was not on the board, the, not that I want to see this, but I just have to explore it because it is a corner building. On Mass Ave, we had those two buildings across from one another, and then one was kind of facing the corridor of Mass Ave on the corner, um, and the other one wasn't. Do you know what part? Like yes, right I do, the high by the school. school. Yes. yes. Do you recall, like, what was the impetus to get the other building with that corner facing? I think that looks good, and maybe it's only because it's on Mass Ave. We actually wanted them to move that off of the corner Did because yes. we wanted the residential <coughs> entrance to be on the side street, not the primary So it's street. just an aesthetic thing. It wasn't anything that uh, in the design. Correct. I actually really like the way that they've... I think this one's much nicer than both those buildings there as far as architecture um yeah no in terms of the fit in the, the what you've done with this parcel and on the corner i'm just curious because um i don't know if you guys know the the area i'm talking about yeah, right talking yeah about. just yeah. past the high school yeah. Yeah. and i think there's you know you can critique both on either side but at least the way it appears more welcoming the one on the left that's still being developed because it's face kind of facing that corner versus the other one if you remember they put a picket fence there right so are you talking are you speaking yeah. specifically <coughs> to the entrance to the commercial space and perhaps looking at um, I was just including curious. the entrance I was just on the corner curious about 
how that design came on the other one and if there was any standard or is there any thinking with corner design buildings? I Please. Just, I mean, I, this is my take on it. Is that the building you're talking about the one that's being developed across the software? Mm -hmm. Right. I think, I could be wrong, but they don't have a step back like we do above the commercial to they, the residential. It just runs straight up and so the- Their step the, back is higher. It's at the, uh, it, it's yeah. at the fourth floor. Yeah. Fourth, yeah. Four stores, okay. but on the ground, it's between the first- I'll on Mass Ave, not on the side street. Between for the first and second floor, there's nothing, and so the angle, it, there's an angle there mm -hmm. for the entrance area mm -hmm. looks nicer. Mm -hmm. um, out of the options that we have, I, I, I prefer this. Well, I, I like think the, I like you've this. done a good job of creating an entryway on each corner, I mean, on either side, I guess I should say, versus the other one, you know, at least the one I'm thinking of, has a picket fence and a tree, and it kind of blocks off the, I don't know, the gatewayness to that building in that commercial. I don't think this one does, so that's why I'm not trying to kind of belabor this, but I was just curious on the thinking of the board, how that one evolved a little bit, and if there was any intentionality on corner design in the past, I guess. There wasn't, but what's specifically on, on I don't think there was a specific point of view other than actually trying to get them to move off of that corner and move the residential entrance to the side street. Um, but what I like about this one is that we don't have a monolithic building running mm -hmm. up, that there is um, an offset in the, um, in the, due to the lot in terms of the way that the building is, is skewed, which is, which creates a more dynamic facade, which I think is, what you're uh -huh. reacting to with the corner entrance, it creates again, it yeah. breaks the the rectangular mass, which is is nice uh -huh. to um, incorporate. And I think again the um, the way that the the lot allows us to do this here is kind of interesting. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thank you. Thanks Great. For Great. Uh, so at this time, we will um, open the floor to public comment. Again, please re raise your hand if you'd like to address the board. Um, and when you're called on, you will have up to three minutes to speak. Please address. Uh, please begin by uh, stating your name, first and last, and um, your address. Please. Linda Chu, Broadway. Um, I very much appreciate the Nika Mormon excuse. Story building is probably going to adversely affect the facilities that are actually on the existing roof. I have huge concern about that given the financial presence that they do have to be more eco conscious about the use of fossil fuels in my own home and how that can affect what I've done to try to you know, sort of accommodate that and not only the financial investment. The assessment of the that my house could be completely different had this house, had this building existed before. And also, I think it might affect the natural sun effects as well. You know, I mean, I appreciate why there needs to be changes to the building, but I think something more like a three story building would be more appropriate than a five story. Please, go ahead, Jim. This is why I ask them to do the shadow studies and let us know sort of how it shadowed the next door residences and whether it shadowed any solar. So I'm really interested in what you had to say. And I'm interested in, in your telling us like, you know, how long are our solar panels going to shadow just because of the building. I will say that um, one thing we're careful of anytime we, you know, even with people where we request that they put solar panels on their roof, we, nobody can predict the future. And obviously there is the opportunity for development really um, in, in many places in, in town. So we do try and, and take that into account, but at the same time um, that um, unfortunately can't be yeah, one no, of the but, but we will there certainly are also other places in Arlington where it might be more appropriate to have a 
I, I, I hear your opinion, and um, it's, it, it's been noted, and we will definitely um, request the, the studies um, to be provided to the board. So thank you. Uh, sure. I did go out and look at that based on the letter you provided us, and uh, I looked at the sites. Your house is actually two houses away. Yes. And at that corner, there are some very large trees already flanking the backside of the property and also at the corner that is, I don't believe, that much higher than this proposed building. So we will look at the shadow study. I'm not saying we're not going to, okay? But I'm just saying that there's already stuff there that high already with the trees there during the summertime. That's what I'm trying to say. Excuse me? But we're, we're not going to do oh. a, a back and forth. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm just saying yeah. that we did look at it, okay? We did not, just not, you know. Yeah. All right. Um, other members of the public wishing to speak? Yes. My name is Terry Chu. I'm actually the tenant on the second floor at 88 Broadway. And I am currently working from home, and I can confirm you this time of the year, I do not get a lot of sunlight. The sun is just slightly over 84, 84, 86 Broadway. So come December, it's just going to bear past that. Um, so I can confirm that this building will put our building, 88, in the shadow. Um, I hear what Ken, say, what Ken was saying about the trees. The tree that he's mentioning, however, is set uh, behind 84, 86 Broadway and doesn't cover 88 Broadway until about like 11 or 12 or maybe an hour and then the sun has moved past that tree. So I don't think it's really accurate to compare the tree line to the building. Um, so I am very concerned about the amount of sunlight that I'm getting. Again, I'm on the second floor. I work from home. So it's, it's a beautiful building. I'm just not sure that it fits with our box. It's so small. It's just it's three residential properties that are sandwiched between one story commercial. Um, so I just I do feel like it's not quite a good for our section. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Hmm. Uh, any other members of the public wishing to speak? Please. Matthew Rowan, uh, 164 Forest Street. Um, I just like to express my for the project as it currently um, stands, or at least thus far. Um, I really like the, the fact that the sort of net commercial space on the property is going to increase from what was previously there. There's been a lot of concern about decreased commercial space in this use. Um, for other projects, it's nice to see that it, it would be increasing in this case. Um, I like the additional residential. I think the the size of the units is actually something that's notable in this project. A lot of multifamily development in Arlington seems to be, like the proposals tend to be like small one bedrooms and like studio size, whereas these seem like they're um, larger units. And I think it's nice to get a variety in, in multifamily because there are different types of families with different needs. Um, um, so that, that's uh, very nice to see. Um, I did want to make a note about the shadow studies, and I think this was noted in public comment as well. It does look like the shadow studies that were um, shown um, today, as well as what I saw online, were sort of interpreting Winter Street as being running east to west, which it doesn't. Um, so I think that the ones that have been performed thus far might not be accurate to what the actual shadow uh, that would be passed, so I think um, it would be good to sort of revisit that um, going forward. Uh, and that, that's all I have to say. Great. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's already 80. Uh, it's six added speech. Sorry. 80 Broadway is a small lot, not much bigger than that required for a two-family home. It is surrounded by lots zoned for and used for low-density residential development. The proposed development is completely out of character with its surroundings and violates ADR standard 2. While it's proposed to be 55 feet tall, 
all the neighboring properties are limited to 35 feet, and most are less than that. This development will stick out like a sore thumb towering over the neighborhood. Height buffer regulations apply to protect people like these. There is no way that ARB can find that the budding two-family homes will not be adversely affected by the additional floor and the additional 10 feet of height. I want to thank the planning director for pointing out the zoning violations regarding the rear, rear yard setback and a complete lack of municipal open space. And I want to thank Mr. Seltzer in his written testimony for pointing out the setback violations of the two front yards in section 5.2.8. As a former ARB member myself, I don't think I ever saw a proposal before the board that was have egregiously violated the zoning This proposal should not have even come before you without first having received variances from the ZBA. Maybe variance if you want to violate the dimensional requirements of the bylaw. I have submitted written testimony to the board that includes the Supreme Judicial Court case, Anthony Cullen Ufula versus Board of Appeal of the City of Newton, which explicitly states that only the ZBA can grant the variance. Given that Cullen Ufula demonstrates that the town council's claim that the mayor can grant the variance is completely wrong, through you, Madam Chair, I would like to ask the developer's attorney to explain by what legal authority the ARB can overrule the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court and allow violations of Arlington zoning bylaw. And given what I heard tonight, I would also like to ask you and the other board members if any of you have been meeting uh, ex parte with anyone on the development team on this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will just state that you have been told time and time again by town council that your understanding of the uh, the uh, ability of the redevelopment board to work together with developers to make decisions on behalf of the town uh, to ensure that these projects um, can move forward in um, accordance with our master plan and our bylaws are beyond what you have just stated. And um, several memos have been um, provided as such and um, they do not need to go in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals before meeting with us. Thank you. Um, any other public comment before we uh, move back to deliberation by the board? Okay, at this point we'll close public comment and uh, I will move to, what I'd like to do first is identify the list that I um, have kept of some of the questions that the board's had for you of um, items that we would like to see further reviewed um, and developed. Um, unless any of the board members feel otherwise, I don't think that we will be able to move to a um, motion to um, approve or, or not this evening. I think that we have uh, several open items. That, does anyone feel differently? No, I don't think we're ready to uh, vote on this project. Okay, great. As is today. Great. So what I'd like to do is read the list that I have and if um, other members of the board can identify anything that I may have missed, uh, that would be great as a starting point. And then we'll continue our discussion, see if anything else um, uh, comes up, and then obviously offer you an opportunity to ask us any questions as well. Great. Um, so I have to review the uh, shadow studies again and, and provide those. Again, I apologize that they were submitted and then they, um, um, that we didn't have a chance to see them. Again, if you could please confirm the, the siting of the building um, in terms of the cardinal directions, that would be great. Um, we'd like for you to provide a lead checklist, um, a tra uh, transportation demand management plan um, in accordance with your request for reduction in parking, to look at the number of um, bic long-term bicycle parking space um, spaces provided to see if those can increase or if not um, provide some reasoning for the request for um, reduction in those. Um, to look again at the um, calculation of the open space uh, presented and whether or not um, uh, that is something that can um, be addressed or um, again a, um, a um, specific request on the, um, the reduction of the relief that you're requesting there. Um, more details on the units um, in terms of number of bedrooms, again, so that we can understand um, the, the types of, of units that you're planning, um, specifically for the placement of the affordable unit. 
um, looking at Winter Street and whether or not you can include um, the seven foot six step back similar to what you have provided again um, on Broadway, knowing that you have stepped back at two at the second story and, and continued up, which we've approved uh, previously in other cases. Um, we'll have to review that together as a board. Um, update to the table on A0. Um, one of them you used the gross floor area, um, one you used the lot area, so to make that consistent. Um, dimension, the buffer um, area that's been provided um, for, for parking. Um, you identified it, but we just need to see the, the dimensions in your plans. Similarly, the dimension on the step back at Broadway and for what you provided on Winter Street as well. Um, dimensions for the roof deck and uh, re-looking at that first floor um, facade um, with additional detail at the um, area where it uh, where the where the public interacts with with that facade and in particular the um, the area uh, around by the parking what else have i missed okay uh, please, uh, <laughs> Top garden on the on the first floor. Yep, thank you. Yeah, I'm looking at that, okay. The rooftop garden on the first floor. <laughs> that was one of the first. Two. No, no, but a patio or something, open space, you know. But yeah, I wouldn't mind having vegetation up there. warn the pedestrians and the drivers so there's not an impact so I think it would be helpful to see what you would be proposing for that I don't know if you mentioned this the buffer for parking at the back yeah yeah that yes, you've mentioned yep. okay lighting plan we usually like to mm -hmm. see a lighting site plan, lighting plan. Yeah, yes site lighting plan um, let's, let's let Jean finish and then you can add. see yes. um, no, but I'll say something, Kim, because I'm looking to see this. Okay. Go ahead. Regarding lighting? Just show us the lighting levels underneath the parking where it overhangs. Just give us a, a light spectrum, you know, uh, foot candles. Yeah, yeah, photometric plans, they'll be perfect. This one nope. That was great. That's what I've got. Steve, did you have anything? I have nothing to add. Okay. <laughs> Melissa? Yeah. Right. Um, any other discussion that the board would like to have at this time before we um, take a motion to continue? Let's ask them when they'd like to come back. Yeah, that'll be the next. But any other <laughs> any other questions? Do you have any questions for the for the board before we make a motion to continue? Well, Great. Thank you so much for your for your um, accommodation and in taking a look at those items. Um, let's see, so we'd like to make a motion to continue this hearing um, to one of our future so meeting panels. dates. Mm -hmm. um, Holly, I think that we have another yeah. meeting in two weeks. Yeah, we're meeting on the 21st and then on uh, December 5 and 19. So we'd want to obviously make sure you have enough time. We'd need the materials um, about a week before, so no later than the Wednesday before the, the meeting, right? Yes. The 19th? Okay, December 19th. So is there a motion to continue? Um, I'm just pull the docket number up again. Is there a uh, motion to continue the uh, public hearing for docket number 3717 to uh, December 19th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Take a roll call vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Um, so that closes uh, agenda item number three. We will now move to agenda item number four, which are um, modifications to the ARB rules and regulations. And these include um, several um, items that we have discussed over the past um, year, really. <laughs> so from town meeting <laughs> and um, through the work that we've been doing with the SketchUp model. So the two items are um, on page seven. Um, does anyone need me to pull these up? Nope, we're good. Oh. Yeah, so we, we previously reviewed these um, and uh, I believe finalized the wording. And um, if there are no comments, we would just need to take a vote to. We need to ask for public comment on it. We will, but I just wanted to see first if there's any, any discussion <laughs> they look before good. we do that. They look good. Nope. Okay, great. Um, so seeing no board discussion, are there any members of the public who would like to um, speak? regarding the proposed changes to the ARB rules and regulations. Okay. Uh, seeing none, we'll close public comment, and I'll see if there is a motion to approve the modifications to the ARB rules and regulations as submitted. So moved. Second. Second. All right. We'll take a roll call vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those have been approved. Thank you very much. Too many windows open. Give me one second. All right, that closes agenda item number four, and we'll now move to agenda item number five, which is the hybrid meeting protocol. Um, so with reference to this item, just pull this up. We um, have discussed previously that the town's remote participation study committee that was um, put in place by town meeting has created a hybrid pilot program that they have requested that the ARB participate in. And as part of that, they created a document um, by which they um, created a series of decision points for us to weigh in on um, related to how we would run a hybrid meeting. Um, that memo has been provided. Actually, I see their memo. I don't see my memo to the board. I just see their memo. I don't think I saw your memo. No, I just see it. I just see their memo. Just their memo. I apologize. Um, so, that's okay. So, we can either defer this to our next meeting so that you have time to review the memo, or I can take you through what my recommendations were. You've had a chance to review what their decision points are. I'm happy to do that and see if you're in agreement or have any changes to that, um, unless you'd like to see that ahead of time. I think either way is fine with me. Uh, I prefer to defer so we can go home. You can do that. <laughs> so um, what we will do is make sure that you have this memo. We can actually send it out following this meeting so that you have plenty of time to review it, and then we'll put this back on the agenda um, for our 21st meeting. Great. All right. Um, so we will now move to agenda item number six, which is the MBTA Communities Working Group, and I'll hand it over to Claire. Great. Thank you. Um, so in um, our work towards um, passing, uh, to, in our work towards uh, passing uh, policy related to MBTA communities, um, one of the things we've been talking about in this group is establishing a working group um, that can work together um, to uh, do a few things, conduct outreach to the community, analyze the feedback, suggest ways uh, the zoning proposals may or could achieve the goals, and then serve as preliminary advisors uh, and reviewers of zoning amendments as they are developed by our um, technical consultant. Um, we had talked about which members of this board or other um, boards and committees and, and town staff and stuff may be um, 
may be appropriate um, to sit on the board. I had a conversation with Doug Heim um, about how many of you could potentially serve in this working group. Um, no more than two, or else we would have to um, uh, follow public meeting law. Um, also, Teresa Marzilli has agreed to be on this working group, who's the community eng uh, engagement coordinator for the town. Um, we're looking for a resident with experience in PR or communications, and then one or two additional rep uh, resident representatives, uh, preferably with planning or zoning experience. Um, we had talked a bit about you know, the community outreach piece of this and how important it was going to be in the community education piece, as well as sort of the technical side and how we were going to need a consultant um, to work more on the, on the, the technical terms of whatever you know, policy, uh, bylaw amendment, whatever we decide to adopt. Um, and so we're really looking for folks who can do both, you know, who can, you know, sort of look at a, a document with some technical, technical expertise, but also understand how to do um, successful outreach to the community. Um, so we're asking the board to vote to establish this working group this evening um, with the membership um, pending, I think. Um, and then uh, I also wanted to talk a little bit about a public meeting that we we're going to have on November 17th related to MBTA communities. And we think we should have um, the committee in place by that time. Oh, that's quick. That's great. Um, I'll see if anyone has any questions for you. If that great. works for you? Perfect. Ken. Uh, no, I would like to put my head in in the, in there for <laughs> to be part of that group. But if there's two other members in this board that feel strongly, I will relinquish that request. Okay. Thank you, uh, Melissa. Um, no, I mean I think that sounds great. We'll have two folks from our board, and then we'll and we want that in place before the seventh. That's what I'm hoping. Okay. Then I just That's noticed cool. that it's the seventh. It's very close. Oh, the seventeenth yeah. of this month. Of this month. Yes. 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 Um, okay. Oh. Got to be. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> that's aspirational at this point. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Gene. This is fine. Yeah. Great, Gene. Steve. Um, yeah, I, I kudos for um, getting uh, Teresa Marzilli. Yes, I've been working with her in a different capacity on something else, and she's she she would be a, a very useful resource and per participant in the effort. Great. She's excellent, and she's very excited to join. Great, so, yeah. fantastic, great. Um, do we have? Do you? Would you like to finalize the members of the redevelopment board this evening, or um, the board is prepared to do that? Okay, so Ken has put his hand up. I will. Not because I am sure that there are other. I think we had several other members even without me putting my hand up before. Well, yeah, I, I so seem to remember. Else? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I seem to remember it was Ken, Jean, and myself who were interested. I was going. I was going to say I would step back and. I'll step back. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Then I. All right. So Ken and Steve. But are you we sure? Jean? Me and Jean won't be able to banter back and forth. Uh oh. I'll, I'll just wait to bring things back to the full board. But we did, we did speak about the fact that we would love to, you know, from the initial proposal that you put forth, um, in terms of engagement, have some additional opportunity for the board to weigh in during the process, as opposed to just mm -hmm. during absolutely the, the final. So I think yeah. Jean, hopefully, we'll make sure that <laughs> there is plenty of opportunity for you to provide. You always provide really wonderful thought mm -hmm. and feedback. So that would be great. Okay, um, so is there a motion to um, to uh, approve the recommended composition of the MBTA Communities Working Group? That's what you need, our approval? I move, I guess, yeah, and do we need to commit to Ken and Steve? Uh, I don't believe that we're committing to the entire composition, but we can, so with the two designated ARB members being um, Ken Lyle and uh, Steve yeah. Rebleck. So, okay. I'll second. Great. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So that great. is approved. Thank you so much for putting that together so quickly. Everything's happening so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so that um, concludes agenda item number six. Um, and uh, we'll now move to agenda item number seven, which is open forum. So at this point, any members of the public who are still with us this evening are invited to speak if you so wish.
Uh, I think I will. Um, okay, great. So, so we would just need you to state your um, first, last name, and address, and then you'll have up to three minutes to address the board. Uh, yeah, Matthew Owen, uh, 164 Forest Street. So I um, wasn't planning on saying anything, but after the, the 80 Broadway thing, I did sort of notice an issue that I had kind of noted theoretically before, which is that the, the open space requirements, usable open space requirements for mixed use development seem to be having a sim similar effect to the sort of FAR requirements that we changed this last town meeting in the spring, whereas on most lots, in a, most commercial lots in Arlington, um, it would be very difficult to sort of meet that requirement while also getting anywhere close to sort of like the allowed height mm -hmm. um, that the mixed use zoning by, uh, by law allows. And so there's definitely a tension there. Um, and so just as the board goes forward thinking about, you know, potential articles for future town meetings, um, I think that would be something worth continuing discussion on. Um, as a town meeting member, I would definitely appreciate that issue coming up, but I think it would probably carry more weight coming from the ARB rather than being a, a citizen uh, petition. So, um, just, yeah, please take that into account. Thank you list. very much, it's and you'll be list. happy yeah. to know that that is number one on our list <laughs> of potential <laughs> zoning bylaw modifications that we have um, identified for this year. And it's something that, just so that you know as well, we try and work with the applicants for in terms of um, looking at trade-offs and opportunities to, to grant relief, because you're absolutely right, that really can pose some challenges to, to projects. Thank you. Um, Seeing no other members of the public here, we'll go ahead and close open forum. Um, and I, uh, I'm not sure what I want to say. Move to new business. Allows open forum of new business. Uh, I just want to make a statement. Yes. Um, I've been serving on this board about maybe seven, eight years now. I am getting very tired of uh, being accused of being ex parte to any developers or anything else here that we're, we've been working on. This board is a volunteer board. We spend a lot of time working on this and be accused of or just being mentioned that way is, um, I believe, is slanderous to our reputation. It's an insult to us. And I want to see what we can do to prevent this going forward anymore. Thank you, Ken. I don't think it's right. I appreciate you saying that. Anything else under new business? Yes, Steve. This isn't new business for, for the board, but I think it will, will be new business from the public. Um, I just wanted to say something about 464 Massachusetts Avenue. This was the uh, former tango spot where we had approved a restaurant and brew pub. And my understanding is that in the midst of all the negotiations that happen and when doing these sort of ventures, they have decided to take another space. And so we will, unfortunately, unfortunately that will not be our, the, the first brewery um, in Arlington. Thank you for letting the public know that. I appreciate <laughs> that. That was a disappointment, I know, to mm -hmm. all of us. We were looking forward to that, to that project. Um, and, and Ken, I think you brought up some good points, and that is something that we should discuss and continue to discuss with town council and, and others in terms of um, the way that not only the redevelopment board, but other boards in town are um, valued or perhaps devalued by um, members who we serve. It, it's also my understanding there's nothing wrong with one member of this board talking to someone who's going to put in their application. Correct. No. But, but it didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. But <laughs> to, be, to be accused of that in, this, right. in, in that in that form, tone, right. in that tone, like we, yeah. we're uh, colluding to something, mm -hmm. and right. there isn't none. Right. And if there is some, prove it. And you know, I mean, 
I take the ethics class uh, every two years. <laughs> you know. Yes, so do we all. So. I think that's an important point, and I appreciate you bringing it up. Thank you. Kelly, please. So, regarding, um, you know, we had discussed in the last meeting, so many moments, I just wanted to give you a heads up on working on a memo for the board, sort of going through each one of the zoning amendments that was proposed, and kind of uh, collecting information regarding those amendments so that that can be shared in the board. So, just to know that we are working on that, and we'll bring something back to you probably at the next meeting. Great, uh, thank you, then Kelly. We do have a number of citizen petitions, just in formal meetings or working groups, working sessions that are on schedule. So those are those will be on the twenty first. Yeah. Great. Um, the, there may be one more that has to go to the test, just depending on okay. how much time is there. I haven't seen many of them, but there have been some people starting to reach out, which is great. We've invited and and encouraged people, anyone who um, has much like you this evening, anyone who has an idea for a um, potential petition, whether it's something that you'd like the board to take up or whether you'd like to propose it yourself, we would love for any anyone to come um, to the board, um, please contact us and we'd love to get you on the agenda to, to speak about um, your, your thoughts on what you'd like to propose for zoning modifications. Right. Any other new business? All right, um, with that we will close our new business section and I will see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motioned. Is there a second? Second. All right. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Ken. Yes. And a yes as well. Thank you so much. This concludes the meeting. Thank you. Thank you.